Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Jackets Nest, where tonight our Lady Jackets will take on the Lady Indians of Dodge County. To start tonight, we want to start with two messages. First, a positive update on the voice of the Jackets, Mr. Jim Sewell. Everybody knows the battles that Mr. Sewell has been fighting, and he is home, doing well, rehabilitating, but we still miss you, Mr. Jim. We want you to get well soon and return to the sidelines as the voice of the Jackets. We also want to take this time to speak on a tragedy that hit the halls of Jeff Davis High last night. Everyone knows we lost a student in a tragic accident and our community is broken, but our community is strong. And I want to read a message from our principal, Dr. Greer Smith, in regards to this event. It is with great sadness that I reach out to inform you that we have tragically lost senior Haley Ray yesterday evening. Haley was well liked and respected a young lady who represented Jeff Davis High School well in multiple areas and she will be greatly missed by our students and staff. This tragedy once again reminds us of how precious life truly is and reaffirms the reality that we are not promised tomorrow. I encourage you all to support and love each other in times of sadness and please keep her family in your prayers. We will have a career center open for all students throughout the day Monday to speak with a counselor if they feel the need. Students, I pray each of you know how much we truly love you as individuals and how much you mean to us here at Jeff Davis High School. The faculty and staff are here for you always. Please let me know if I can do anything for you. We thank Dr. Smith for a great message. We pray for the Ray family. And we will come together once again as a Jeff Davis community in a time of tragedy. So we got a good matchup tonight. The Dodge County Lady Indians travel to the Jackets Nest, taking on your Jeff Davis Lady Yellow Jackets. Coach, we have a little history with Dodge County. Absolutely. Going back to our days at Dublin, um, the old the old saying, the chant, D.C. what? Um, you're looking at a really talented bunch coming from Dodge County tonight, sitting at 6-2 and two right now. Started the region off with a win last night against Worth County at home over in Eastman. I believe they won that one 58-46, to 12-point um, victory for the Lady Indians. Um, and we're going to see the same type of athleticism and good fundamental basketball on the boys' side later tonight too. But this girls' team going to be very athletic, a lot of good length, going to be able to disrupt some passing lanes, and going to be trying to jump some things that the Lady, ja the Lady Yellow Jackets are going to be trying to do tonight. Kind of like how we talked about the last time we were on the air when we took on Telfair County. Got to take care of the basketball tonight. That's going to be key. Hustle plays, effort on rebounds. Got to give yourself second chance opportunities against a team like Dodge, especially with somebody that has the length like Dodge County that's going to be really good on the boards. Well, once again, we know that tonight is about the Lady Jackets. It's about what game we play, how we control the basketball, how we control the tempo of the game. And I'm so proud of the growth that our girls have shown throughout the season. Coming off of a game last night that was tooth and nail that didn't go their way, I expect them to rebound very well at home. I expect them to take a step forward and be in contention to win this thing late in the fourth quarter. Coach Rents has once again in year two developed a plan that is fundamentally focused, and we've seen growth throughout the season, Coach. Excited to see in this first region game at home how well our girls can produce and who they really are and I'm excited for them tonight. Starting lineup for the Jackets are number two, Markyla Durden. Number three, Alira Van. Number 21, Destiny Ivory. Number four, Bentley Metz. And number one, Latrice Shivers. 
for the Dodge County Lady Indians. We've got number 25, 23, 5, 20, and 4. Tip off goes to the Lady Indians. Lady Indians dribble the ball down the floor, work it down the right wing. Big jump shot, it's up. Lady, G Lady Indians come with the rebound and make the basket. Jackets coming out, try to trap Bentley Metz. Errant pass, turnover, just like that. Back to the Lady Indians, Coach. Yeah, you know, and right there off the bat, what we've just talked about, protecting the basketball. And you can tell Dodge has probably seen some film as they go inside of the low block. Tough basket there for the Lady Indians as they extend the lead to four. Ball coming to Mets down the right wing. Gets it back up top. Jacket setting up the offense. Another Turn air over. pass for the Jackets as the Dodge County Indians drive, dribble down. Jackets try to come up with an effort play. There's Dodge under the basket. Foul. Shooting foul for the Lady Indians. Lady Indians lead our Lady Jackets four to nothing. And Coach, you can could, you could kind of see Dodge already coming out with a mindset similar to Telfair the last time that we were on the air. Full court press, bringing them up, trying to put pressure down the, down the right side, down the sideline. Mets did a great job getting the ball down the floor, advancing the ball with her dribble. And then a couple of errant passes went the other way as the rebound put back missed by the Indians. Ball out of bounds, possession stays. Lady Jack has had a key opportunity there with two missed free throws, but Dodge County comes up with the rebound, and Lady Jack has knocked it out. Inlet pass comes down to the low post. Jackets are fighting, and I tell you what, 25 for the Lady Indians has been a force down low so far this evening. She has, and that's that length and that size that we talk about that you typically see from a Dodge County team on the girls and boys side. Um, Jackets trying to work through the pressure here. Ball batted out of bounds. Possession Coach, we're seeing a lot jackets. of ball pressure on the inbound. We're seeing a lot of it in a full court press effort. And our Lady Jackets have got to be able to break the initial press, drop the balls. And you can see right there, Coach, another example of how press allows passes to get errant and allows quick turnovers. Yes, and especially, and I know you're going to hear me say it a lot, but when you look at the length of a team like Dodge, it's forcing us, unless you go low, you've got to throw that pass a little higher to get over their length, as you saw there on the errant pass from Mets that went out of bounds on the baseline, as Dodge has it. Dodge drives it to the right. Jump shot is up. Rebound to Dodge. Another errant shot. And there's a third attempt for Dodge where there's a shooting foul. Dodge owning the offensive board so far tonight in the contest. To the line is number four for Dodge County. Looks like we'll have a sub coming in for the Lady Jackets after the first free throw, which is up and off. Lady Indians 0 for 3 to start the night from the charity strike. Second shot is up and drains. Latrice with the inbounds, working it to Young Wyatt. Wyatt drives. They're pressing her on the sideline. Turnover come up with by the Lady Indians. Lady Indians drive it down the right, right side. Number five slows it down, works at the top of the key, Coach. Inside the 25 at the high post. Jackets are trying to keep the ball from going to her, so that could be a film study thing, saying they like to run a lot of offense through the big one. Um, Jackets fell back into that 1-2-2 two, two zone there. Right through the hands of the Jackets, out of bounds, off the inbound. Turnover, Dodge County basketball. Another turnover for the Jackets, fourth on the night. Lady Indians give it to 25. 25 with the post move, turns. Aaron, but there's 20 with the rebound, and they're just continuing to own the boards. Another big-time shot down in the low post by 25. Coach Rent's going to take a timeout here. Looks like she's going to go with a full. But you're right, Coach, Coach. I mean, let's take this second right here to hear from these wonderful Jacket sponsors. Jeff Davis High School would like to thank the following alumni sponsors for their support of Yellow Jacket Athletics. Baby and Me, Sellers Feed and Seed, Sweet Teas, Jeff Davis Monument, Dr. Gina Roberts, Laney Internal Medicine, Lumber City Drugs, 
Hazelhurst Auto, Pig Out, Southern Roots, Stones Machine, Kane Insurance, Whitfield and Breedlove PC, South Georgia Dentistry, Commons Tire and Auto, McPherson Manufacturing, Water Service Center, Ragland Timber, Pallet One, Cheney Bush, Renaissance Bank, Family Healthcare Connections, Davis Farm and Garden, Hair Pro, Flaming H Meats, Two Brothers Cafe and Catering, Towns Bluff, Cotton Partners, Triple H Specialties, Mana Cafe and Eatery, Rebel Auction Company, Java Queen, and Home Team Orthodontics. Welcome back from a timeout. Coach Rents called one there. Going to work on some low post coverage, right? And here come the Jackets on the inbound. Destiny to Latrice, still working that full court press. There's the Destiny ball. back in the middle. Jackets, errant ball, turnover to the Lady Indians. And Lady you Indians tell. get it on the short side of the court here, Coach. Yes, and you can tell, it, again, the length of the Indians causing fits for the Lady Jackets right now, and they really don't have an answer for it. About the best thing, fake high, try to go low. But it is causing errant passes as we have a foul there against the Lady Jackets. Shooting foul. It'll send the Indians to the line, shooting two. Number 25 on the first shot. Shot is up and in. The second shot is up. And in. Latrice on the inbound, working it to Marcala. Marcala back to Latrice. Oh, no. Big turnover. There's number four up in traffic. Lady Jackets fighting for a rebound. Caught Calling a it one there. and one. Possession goes to the Indians. See, the Lady Jackets are going to play their man to man here off the inbound. Indians back to 25. 25 owning the boards. Putting it in the glass. Lead extends for the Lady Indians. Ball batted around back to the Lady Indians. Outside to the right wing. Into the short corner. Shots up. Shot drains as the lead is extended to 13. Latrice throws the ball up. Another costly turnover for the Jackets. It's 20. Charges. We're swatting. Jackets come up with a rebound, but there it is. Not a turnover, a foul for the Lady Indians. Expect the Lady Indians to keep that pressure up here. Well, they're going to back them off. Jackets going to get to bring the ball up the floor. Lady well, Indians Van. sitting in a Tries to work a mouse pass. Gets it to Marcala. Marcala back to Van. Van tries to swing it. Marcala across court to Latrice. Latrice drives off the boards. There's wide. Should be a shooting foul there, Coach. And the Jackets go to the line, trailing the Dodge County Lady Indians 13 to nothing. Two big free throws coming up right here. Trying to get in the scoring column. First shot, a little strong, hits the back of the rim and bounces out. Second shot by the Lady Jackets. Second shot is up, no good. And the Lady Indians turn it over or get the ball right here off Two missed free throws. Driving the ball down the floor. Two three zone here for the Lady Jackets. Ball to the wing, inside to the low block. 25 gets her own rebound, goes right back up strong and lays it in. Errant pass from the Lady Jackets. Goes out of bounds, it'll be Lady Indian basketball. Here we go. Need to try and find something here defensively to try to throw the Indians off of their rhythm. Ball into the short corner, back out to the wing. Down inside, right into the middle. Batted away, still Indian basketball. Ball out into the short corner, shot. 
up and off. Wow. Number Ball 25 deflected. from Dodge County, two more points. Coach, she has been a force on the boards. She's probably scored three-fourths of the 17 they put on the board so far. Picked up her dribble. Jeff yep. Davis has got to move right here, Coach. Into the corner. Broke it. There's Latrice. Big shot. Fouled and one. Big-time shot. Lady Jackets on the board. Now you can kind of take that deep breath. Absolutely. Scored. Now we've got to figure out a way to throw Dodge off their rhythm, get some stops, try to chip away at this lead. Well, four-point swings can, can chip away the lead, Coach. Yes, sir. Latrice, been a great free-throw shooter for us. Shot is up, bangs off, and 25 comes up with a rebound for the Indians. Number five moves the ball down the floor. She drives, kicks out to the left, to the right. 25 with the rebound, and there it is off the glass, and there's a shooting foul. Jackets with their fourth shooting foul in the first quarter on the Lady Indians. Number 25, according to my roster here, Lyric Green, Jr. Got her listed at six feet even. Feel like she might be a little taller than six feet. She's done a great job tonight on the boards, controlling them, um, being active in the rebounds, Coach, and, and she's been a force. She plays very physical down inside, and it's just something that we haven't been able to find an answer for yet as the shot's off. Right back to her. Drives inside, a little off there. Just look at her battle down inside. There's Lady Latrice Jackets. comes up with it. Oh, got her for a walk there, Coach, and that could have been a big break. Had Wyatt streaking open coming down this, this near sideline to the near wing to us. Lady Indians keep possession. Right back inside to her. Power dribble. Up and off. Mark Tyler Durden did a great job there boxing out, making people earn rebounds, Coach. Why slows down, kicks out to Marcala. Marcala through a leer at the top of the key, Coach. She dribbles, drives, tries to get the end cut to Wyatt, pulls it back out. Wyatt in, look to Marcala. Yep. Good call, got her on a push. And just like that, Coach, there's Jackets with a play under the basket. Little box formation here for the Lady Indians as the, or excuse me, for the Jackets as the Indians make a sub. Ball comes out with the trees. A little short, short a little rebound short. of the Indians. And there's number five for the Indians driving with the right hand. Works. Shot is up off the glass. No good, but there's 25. Another contested shot. So they got a shooting foul here on the Jackets. Green will go back to the line, shooting two more. Second shot is up. Bangs off the rim, and there's Latrice with the rebound. Latrice drives the ball up the floor, crosses to her right, picks the dribble up, sees it. There's Clear Stenson. Back to Latrice. Turned over in traffic, and there's 21 for Dodge. Driving it, left hand under the basket. Quick pass off the glass. Lady Indians lead. Our Lady Jackets, 21 to three. Coach Rent's gonna take another timeout here. Looks like just a quick 30 second. With this timeout, let's listen to one of our great jacket sponsors. Make tailgating easy and delicious with help from Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. Three Rivers Meat Company offers specialty cuts of beef, pork, chicken, and seafood. They also have several types of the in-house made fresh sausage. If you need a grill, they're the exclusive dealer for Traeger Grills in Hazelhurst. 
If you place your order in advance, call 912-551-9621 or visit their beautiful meat counter at 90 West Coffee Street. Go Jackets from Derek Wooten and the Meat Professionals at Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. Off of that timeout, welcome back to a wonderful Saturday night of Jacket Basketball. Dodge County leading our Jackets 21-3 with 2.20 remaining in the first quarter. Inbound for the Lady Jackets into some trouble. Ball on the ground, last touch by the Lady Indians. Possession will stay with the Jackets. Looking for Latrice Shivers. Latrice drives the ball. Great pass Across to Durden. Mark Kyla. Mark Kyla with the pump fake down to Claire. A little short. And there's a turnover. Number five drives. Going to make her use her left hand, coach. Swaps it off the glass. It's a good finish there. Now they're in the full court press. Presser in the inbound. Ball deflected right back to the Indians in the corner. Shots up. We a got shooting a shooting foul for the Jackets. Here's the question. Was her foot on the line? Are they going to give her three or two? Looks like he's going to give her three there. First shot, First up shot for the Lady Indians is up and good. Second shot. Bangs off the front of the rim. Sub here for the Lady Indians. Look like they're going with a smaller lineup on the floor. Third shot up and is short. Claire Stenson comes up with a rebound. Gives it to Latrice. Dodge continuing to pressure our Lady Jackets. Latrice swaps, crosses, drives. Goes full and misses the shot here. Lady Indians come up with the rebound. Drive the ball. Top of the key. Works it right. And a travel for the Lady Indians. Ball goes back to the Jackets here, Coach, with 1.30 to play in the first quarter. Need to find a way to try to get on the board again here. Wasn't expecting the pass there. Right back to the Indians. Shots off. Rebound back to the Indians. Out into the short corner. Shot short. Lady Wyatt Jackets come up with the rebound. White drives. We've got a timeout. Something going on here. Possession will stay with the Jackets. I wonder if the clock didn't run as they're going to pressure the inbound here. Looking for Latrice. Good pass. Latrice Tries to go up and draw the foul. foul. Hey, great job by Latrice there, Coach. Situational awareness, knowing where she was on the floor, running the ball down. Felt the defender coming at her hard. Go up and try and draw that foul. Great heads-up IQ play there from Latrice. Latrice to the line with two shots. She dribbles. First shot is up, drains it. Latrice with all four of the Lady Jacket points thus far. Second shot is up. Bangs off the rim and finds it. She's living right. Lady Indians push the ball to the right side. It's already at the wing. In cut. Turnover there. 23 couldn't come up with the Jackets. Game possession. Dodge with a lot of heavy pressure, trying to set some rub screens to get somebody open. We got a five-second call. Ball back to the Indians. Unfortunate there, Coach, to give Dodge possession underneath their own basket here. And, I mean, you know, those are tough. The pressure, shots blocked there, deflect. There it is. Latrice comes up with the rebound. She crosses. Aaron pass there. Field jacket basketball. Well, let's see what Dodge does. They're going to walk up, pressure the inbound, looking to get it into Latrice. Deflected out of bounds. Should stay with the jackets. It does. Dodge doing an excellent job of making these passes on the inbounds tough for the jackets. Absolutely. Still looking to get it to Latrice. Once again, deflected, disrupted by that Dodge County pressure. Stays with the jackets. 
and Dodge understands the pressure that they're trying to put on the tree shivers. Yes. Well, they're doing, trying Big to throw pass, one down. Turned over. Turn right back over to the Jackets. Wise comes back up with it. We've got a reach in here. I believe so. Looks like that's what they're going to call. Possession stays with the Jackets. It's great to see the youthful roster of the Jackets continuing to fight. We've seen um, Wyatt grow throughout the season. Really proud to watch him. Looks like we're in the bonus here. Wyatt to the line to shoot a little one and one. Wyatt's first shot is up. Good. Rolls in. Must be an automatic two now. Because Dodge definitely was not prepared to try to get a rebound there. So I'm assuming when you go to the bonus, it must just be an automatic two now. Second shot on the way. Second shot is up. And the end for the Lady Jackets. Lady Jackets cut the lead to 24-7. to seven. Here with 44 seconds left in the first quarter. Wow. Acrobatic shot by the Lady Indians, and it drains. With a shot to the line, with the chance to extend the lead to 20. Lady Indians, 26. Jackets, 7. Shots off. Alira Van comes up with the rebound. Works it down the right side. Crossover. She settles it down at the top of the key, Coach. Works the right side to Marcala. Marcala, pump fake. Works it inside to Claire Stinson. Claire puts the shot up and is fouled. Lady Jackets go to the line. Claire will shoot two here. Got to take the free ones when they give them to you. First shot drains for Claire Stenson. Claire's second shot is up. In and out, but there's two Lady Jackets there in contention. Dodge comes up with the rebound, works it down the right side. Got her for a travel. Possession goes back to the Lady Jackets. Got a substitution here for the Indians. Looks like number 45, Chloe Johnson, a freshman. Jackets trail your Lady Indians 26 to 8. 13 seconds left in the first quarter. Got Marcala from setting up a moving screen here. Physical play by the young Marcala Durden. But nonetheless, possession goes back to the Lady Indians. Tell you what, Coach, things are physical tonight down there under the basket. Yes, they are. And for the most part, unless there's been just a clear and obvious shooting foul, they really kind of let them play and battle down there. There's been some of these rebounds that Dodge has gone after, after and some that we've gone after that you could argue and say, hey, where's the call at? But these officials are doing a really good job of letting the girls play physical right. inside tonight. Jackets to the line, shooting two. First one is up, off the front iron, high off the glass, right into the hands of the official. Second shot on the way. It is banked in off the glass. Dodge County going to press it up, right through the middle of Jeff Davis County, pass to the wing. Inside, just short, and that is how the quarter will come to an end. Your Lady Jackets, Braylon. The Dodge County Lady Indians, 26 to 9. Let's take this quarter change to listen to one of our great sponsors of the Yellow Jacket Network. At Altima Hall Bank & Trust, we strive to help you live your best life. That means offering loans for nearly any dream or goal. With competitive rates, local processing, and quick decisions, we can customize a loan to fit your needs. This is Misty Boatwright, Relationship Manager at the Hazelhurst Branch. 
Come see me today at 57 North Tallahassee Street or visit our website at altamahall.bank. And let's work together to achieve your financial goals. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. I tell you, Coach, the school spirit by these Dodge County cheerleaders is unbelievable. They're unbridled. They're loud. It's awesome. Yeah. I'm lady Jackets starting this second quarter off trailing the Lady Indians. 26 to 9. Lady Jackets with possession. Alira Van works it to the top of the key. Pulls the big three from downtown. Bounces off. Lady Indians come up with the rebound. Work it down the right side of the court, Coach. Give it a 25. Got her for a travel. And maybe the first mistake that young lady's had tonight, she's had a great game. Yes, she has. And it's really just the pass. She caught it, and then she couldn't establish a pivot foot. Took one too many steps. Cost her there. Dern with the ball at the top of the key. Looking out of the wing to Wyatt. Puts the ball on the floor. Back out to the JD logo. Ball poked away. Lose Tell you what, it, number five for the again. Lady Indians, giving great defensive effort there. She comes up with the turnover. She drives, takes it. There's 25 that comes up with the rebound and has the placement to drain. Stolen off the inbound by the Lady Indians. Back up, off, deflected out of bounds. Possession staying with Dodge County. Dodge County, number 24. Going to be the inbound here. She works the basketball, gives it on the right side there, and there's Claire. And that young lady Indian can't maintain possession and travels. Possession goes to the Jackets. Jackets did a really good job of double teaming green to where they couldn't get her the ball at the inbound as Claire gets the ball stolen away. Lose right it. There's Marcala. She comes up with it. Pump fakes, gets it to Wyatt. Wyatt at the right wing, working to the top of the key to Marcala. Good pivot, comes up with it. Should have been a foul there. Summer, excuse me, not Summer, but the young Wyatt takes the shot. It's off. And the Lady Indians come up with possession. Bringing some of their original starting five back on the floor to join the rest. Lady Jackets made no subs coming out of the quarter there. Stuck with the same lineup. Found a, found a little success there on the offensive end. Sticking with what was working. Ball back up top. Shot goes up. Three-pointer. Uh, great job of swinging the ball around there, Coach. Putting our defense in some stress. And you come up with the, air, the open shot there. Trying to get the ball to Latrice there. Foul called against the Indians on the reach. Possession will stay with the, with the Jackets. A lot of pressure here. Coming from the Indians. Ball Lady goes Jackets to with the inbound. Ball off. Looked like the five, Marcala Durden. Turnover, ball goes to the Indians. Straight line, look here. Build a wall, just get it to 25, and she finishes. That's Marcala a way the double team. The ball up the floor on the right side. They keep pressing her to the sideline, but there's an inlet to Kale Air. Fair with the shot that's Aaron. There's Dodds with the rebound. We've got to get some help under the offensive boards. Yes, sir, we do. Struggling in the offensive rebound category. What a little Acrobatic up and under. shot by four. Let's look at that rebound. Stoppage of play here. Looks like we've got one shoe came off. Looks like Wyatt down there on the baseline. Jackets are battling hard, trailing the Dodge County Lady Indians, 35 to 9. Van to Latrice. Latrice works it back and just miscommunication on the pass. Turnover. Excuse me, Lady Jackets come back with possession. Kickball by the Lady Indians. Kind of seeing, it's almost like a little bit of panic 
from the Lady Jackets right now. They're looking to get the ball to Latrice, which... The Lady Indians just attacking the basketball in transition, mid-dribble, and the Lady Jackets just don't have an answer right this second. Nobody on the backside. I believe Claire got a little confused. The ball bounced short of her. Thought she had some help behind her on the wing. Nobody there to corral that loose ball. Turnover back to the Lady Indians. But, Coach, it's, you can almost see it's almost like a that deer in the headlights look. They see the pressure coming, and then, like on the turnover a few possessions ago, as the Lady Jackets do corral the rebound, instead of waiting for us to break down the floor, we try to pass the ball back too quick and not having enough patience. The pressure will break down. It's all about being patient. The ball deflected out of bounds there by the Lady Indians. Wyatt will inbound. Possession will stay with the Jackets. But it's almost like we're not giving things enough time to develop the on pressure, the inbound plays. The pressure from the Lady Indians is just daunting. Stolen away by Dodge Indians Counselor. in transition. Hey, good turnover there by the young freshman. Wyatt, but a travel. Gives the ball right back to the Lady Indians. They will have the ball on the baseline. Great job jumping the passing lane there. Just had some bodies, couldn't really corral herself, corral the dribble, wound up traveling. At this point, the Indians just building a wall in front of Lyric Green. They're throwing it up to her, and then she just puts the ball on the floor and gets right past us. Latrice bringing it up the floor, dribbles the ball out of bounds, turnover back to Dodge County. I believe substitution. This looks like beautiful Thomas subbing into the game for the Lady Jackets. Dodge County going to two platoon here. Bring a whole fresh five off the bench. Normally, Coach, when you get that type of, of line shift, you're looking at a, a, another pressure defense coming on. That's the truth. And you may even see a different type of half-court defense, too. Looks like a little bit of a smaller lineup. Do have a bigger body out there, stronger body out there. But a little smaller, more lanky, more length. Shots up. Lady Indians, first shot. Too strong. Second shot. Coming. Lady Jackets trailing the Lady Indians of Dodge County 37 to 9. Second shot is up. Once again, too strong. Marcala Durden comes up with the rebound, drives it down the floor. Big time three shot. Off banks. And Dodge comes up with the rebound. Dodge flips it. Inbound pass. No good there. Possession goes back to the Lady Jackets. Dodges. More of a full court man look now. Not really looking to press it. Ball goes to beautiful Thomas in the middle. Back to Markyla Durden. In to Claire. Back to beautiful. Just taken right from her hands. Going the other way of the Lady Indians. 24. Misses the layup. Right back to Dodge. Ball. Wow. Sky high. Steph Curry teardrop. Two more on the board for the Indians. Jackets bringing it up. Beautiful Thomas in the middle to Claire. Stolen away. Another turnover there for the Lady Jackets. Dodge comes up with it, working it back. Left wing. Long two-point shot, but it's foul shooting. Twenty-four going to go to the line. This will be Xavier Mann shooting two for the Lady Indians. Interesting stance there for the free throw shot as the first one's up and in. But, hey, the old saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Second shot for Mann on the way. Mann is a senior for the Lady Indians. Rims in and out. Rebound right back to Mann. Puts it up. Another one batted out of bounds by Claire. Possession will stay with the Lady Indians. Baseline out of bound to come. There's that line set. Throwing back over the top, the number 14. That would be Jemiah Burns. That shot looked like it might have been deflected. Must not have been as possession stays with the Jackets. 
Lady Jackets slowing things down, trying to work it down the floor, but Dawes just playing man and just smothering. Yeah, playing a lot of tight man. Um, you saw that, that full court press, a lot of that heavy pressure early. And just because they've backed off, like you said, Coach, they're just playing full court man to man. They're bringing one or two up to take the guards off the inbound. Foul called against the Indians here. Got him with a reach in foul. Jackets with possession. Beautiful Thomas with the inbound. So they've got three up, not pressuring the ball anymore. They've got one just kind of playing almost like a zone look as the ball goes off. Beautiful Thomas's hands and out of bounds. Possession back to the Indians. But that number two sitting right in the middle. Her responsibility is to pick up the inbounder when she steps in, and then they've got two to take the guards. Just a full court man look and just applying a lot of hands on on ball pressure. Off the screen to the wing. Shots off. Rebound back to, I believe that was man. Beautiful Thomas with the rebound. They've got beautiful pinned. Gets it to White. White is fouled on the inbound. Lost her shoe. That's number two in this quarter. Might need to get some new shoe strings. Time a little tight. So White slides the shoe back on. Dodge bringing three new bodies back onto the floor. Again, just full court man. Dodge continuing to pressure there Lear in man. the man. Brings it up the floor. Got bumped there, lost it out of bounds, but possession does stay as Dodge County poked the ball away from her. She dribbled down the sideline. Wide inbound. Screen from Claire into Van. Van, big shot. Little off short. Iron. White comes off with it. She works it inside to clear in the high post. Back out to White. Three point shot. Hey, there's the, another freshman there with the rebound. Things getting physical here in the game. Ball stays with White. Into the corner to Thomas. Looks to go over the top to Wyatt. She corrals it. Alira Van from deep. Rattles in and out. in and out. And there goes the Lady Indians. Pushing Mario the ball Man. down the floor. 13. Almost loses it on the dribble. Got a foul call there against the Lady Indians. Possession going to stay with the Jackets. Our Lady Jackets trail the Lady Indians of Dodge County 40 to 9. Looks like we've got a set of sisters here for the Lady Indians. I don't see Xavier in the senior, but number 13, that would be her, I'm assuming her sister, Amara Man, that took the ball down the floor on that last Dodge County possession. Van shooting two at the line here for the Jackets. First shot is up and in. Second shot on the way. Up and good from Alira Van. Stepped over the line. Turnover. Possession back to the Lady Jackets. That's one of those things where you would hear a paint-up crew or somebody yelling the, you can't do that chant. The ball goes to Van, back to beautiful Thomas. Bodies all over the floor. Tie up. Possession will go to the Indians. Dodge going to bring it up the floor. Bring it right up to the top of the key is the younger man. Puts up a three. It's off. Rebound to Thomas. Back to Thomas. To White. Lear Van going to bring the ball down the floor. 
slowing the pace down a little bit. Flair with the ball, gets it tipped away. Pass deflected, stolen. Beautiful Thomas comes and forces the jump ball to keep possession with the Jackets. Beautiful Thomas giving great effort plays throughout tonight, Coach, in this first half. She Lady just, Jackets continuing to fight, trailing the Lady Indians of Dodge County 40 to 11. Inside to Claire, out to Wyatt. Wyatt puts up a three. Right back to beautiful Thomas who goes up, leaves it a little short. Rebound to Dodge County. Looks like they're going to get Thomas with a foul. A reach-in call. Possession will go back to the Lady Indians. Ball comes into Mann. Mann going to bring it right through the center of Jeff Davis County there. And she puts up another deep three, and this one is good. Kind of a dagger in the heart of the Lady Jackets. That one Lady was... Jackets working it up the right-hand side. Wyatt crosses over, gets it to Van, working a two-man game at the top. Beautiful Works it to Thomas. Beautiful Thomas. Right through her hands, but she's there to regain it. Van with a bounce pass to Flair. Flair to Wyatt. Wyatt being pressured. Going back and forth up there through Jeff Davis County. Got to put it up. He's fouled on the shot, and Claire goes back to the line. Stinson will go to the line to shoot two. Beautiful Thomas. They're giving her some time to tie her shoelaces up there nice and tight. Ready to rock and roll. Claire Stinson, first free throw on the way. Off front iron, right back to her. Second free throw on the way. It's up. Off the back iron, but thrown out of bounds by the Lady Indians. Possession will stay with the Jackets. It'll be beautiful Thomas to inbound. Looking to try to work the ball in. Just going to throw it over the top to Wyatt. Back into the corner. Beautiful Thomas' shot for three is short. Rebound to the Lady Indians. Man has possession. Slowing it down a little bit. Now bringing it down the floor. 45 seconds wing. left in this half, Coach. Shots off. Rebound back to the Indians. Hits the deck hard. Loses it out of bounds. Possession jackets. Lady Jackets and Lady Indians in a physical contest. Ball goes to Wyatt. Bringing it down the sideline right here, right beneath us. Almost loses it out of bounds, but corrals it. Pressure in her face. Ball goes to Van. Puts up a three. Foul against the Indians. Jackets will be going to the line, shooting two. Lady Jackets at the line, trailing the Dodge County Lady Indians, 43 to 11. What we got going on here, Coach? 10-second call. You have 10 seconds to get your free throw shot off from the time the ball leaves the official's hands and gets to the shooter. Took entirely too long there through her pre-shot routine. Only one, up oh, two. Shots up. Off the back iron, right to Claire. Puts it up and gets fouled. 24 seconds left in this half. You Jackets, know, Coach. A lot of youth on the floor, Coach, and working very hard. Yes, they are. A lot of youth down there on the floor right now. And, you know, you kind of forget about the 10-second call because you really don't see it a whole lot. But after about five warm-up, Motions there as the first shot from Stinson rims in and out. You got the 10 second call and then you lose a free throw because of it. Um, so missed opportunity to get a chance at two points there. Claire's second shot rattles off the back iron. Ball goes to Mann. She's going to bring Indian. it right back Working to the Working it up the floor with the shot clock turned off. 
Great Eddie Indian. Indian. Aaron shot. Jackets come up with it. Eight seconds left. Seven. Six. Three. They're working two. Shot is up. And the Lady Jackets go into halftime trailing the Lady Indians of Dodge County 43 to 11. We're going to take a break here to hear from our great sponsors. Enjoy halftime, and we'll be back with a second half action of Lady Jacket basketball. The Bank of Hazelhurst is Jeff Davis County's only locally owned and operated bank, serving their friends and family since 1906. They offer a wide array of services, including personal, commercial, and electronic banking services, along with mortgage and ag lending. For more information on the services they offer, call them at 912 375 4228. Download their banking app or contact them online at bankofhazelhurst.com. The Bank of Hazelhurst. When others have their branches, they have their roots. Since their founding in 1968, the Beasley Group has become a vertically integrated leader in the forest products industry, and this growth has made them the largest hardwood sawmill in the United States and North America's foremost producer of crane mats and timbers for the energy transmission, utility, and construction industries. The Beasley Group is proud to be members of the Hazelhurst and Jeff Davis County community. They are also proud supporters of all Jeff Davis High School sports. Go Jackets from the Beasley Group. CNH Creative Flooring can make your floors beautiful. They are this area's foremost experts when it comes to concrete grinding, polishing, crack repair, and epoxy coatings. They offer hundreds of color epoxy flake systems to choose from, custom metallics, neat coats, inlaid emblems, and much more. Whether it's your home, garage, man cave, pool deck, sidewalks, porches, or carport, let us help you make it gorgeous, safe, colorful, and skid resistant. Call Daryl Hutto at 912-381-9037 or Cody Carter at 912-592-5493 or message them on Facebook. Cypress Hill Tent Shop, located in Graham, Georgia, offers tenting solutions for every need. Sunroofs, tent matching, removal of old tent, and new installation using state-of-the-art equipment and machines. Cypress Hill Tent Shop uses a union tent, guaranteed not to bubble, fade, or discolor over time, and offers both carbon and ceramic tent options. Tent protects the inside of your vehicle and keeps the inside cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. We also offer pickup and drop-off options for your convenience. Call us today. Go Jackets! EP American Footwear in Hazelhurst is proud to be a part of the Hazelhurst Jeff Davis community and are proud sponsors of all Jeff Davis County sports. If you are looking for a great job with a great company, they are hiring for all shifts. You can apply in person Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 at 10 North Hill Street in Hazelhurst. Go Jackets from all the folks at EP American Footwear of Hazelhurst. Go Jackets! Experience a better way to bank at Interstate Credit Union in Hazelhurst, where they offer a wide variety of loans. Interstate Credit Union is second to none when it comes to low rates and great customer service, specializing in personal loans, new home and construction loans, and automobile loans, as well as many other types. Their broad services include personal checking, savings, business, in-person, online, and mobile banking, and much, much more. Visit them at 14 Henson Street or call 912-375-0640, or you can contact them online at interstatecu.org. At Jeff Davis Hospital in Hazelhurst, we are committed to building a healthy community. We use the latest technology, and our knowledgeable team members provide exceptional, state-of-the-art care to our local community and surrounding areas. We provide a respectful understanding of care for our patients and their loved ones. For more information about Jeff Davis Hospital and the services we provide, Call 912-375-7781 or visit us online at jeffdavishospital.org. Dr. Kurt Munsiak and his staff at the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic have proudly served this community as the original walk-in clinic for your sick visit needs and as volunteer sports medicine for all our Jeff Davis athletics since 2014. Whether at the clinic, on the sidelines, courtside, mat side, or on the diamond, Dr. Kirk is always ready to help. Give him a call at 912-375-4884 or pop in at 22 Cross Street in Hazelhurst behind Jeff Davis Hospital. God bless and go Jackets from the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic. Need salvage parts for your new or late model car or truck? Then you should call McCarty Auto Parts, where parts arrive daily, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, at their location at 118 Ottawa Hall Road in Hazelhurst. Check out their inventory online 24-7 at McCartyAuto.com. If they don't have the parts you need, they'll find it. 
Call McCarty Auto Parts in Hazelhurst for all your salvage part needs. 1-800-329-7258. Go Jackets!
All right, we're back as the Lady Indians bring it out. Come to the right wing right here in front of us, Bentley Metz, putting some ball pressure on the ball here. A little spin move inside. Good defense for Metz. Forces the errant shot. Possession to the Jackets. The Lady ball. Jackets with possession. Destiny Ivory works to Latrice. Drives down the floor. Kicks it out to Markala Durden. Swings it right. Inlet to Destiny. Got it for an up and up, but possession stays with the Jackets. Jackets with the inbound. Markala gives it to Latrice. Latrice just tries to cross. Hand goes in. Turnover for the Lady Jackets. Lady Indians working the ball down the floor. Number four is at the top of the key. Swings it right to five. Kicks it to the baseline, but a travel and possession goes to the Lady Jackets. Lady Jackets on the dribble. Working the ball across to Wyatt. Wyatt swings right, picks up the dribble, gets her on a cross. Turnover goes to the Indians. Number five, bounce pass inside, and it's foul, shooting foul. 23 goes to the line. Will be another senior here for the Lady Indians, Javonna Hamilton. Lady Indians lead the Lady Jackets, 43 to 11. First shot is good. Substitution van for Wyatt for the Lady Jackets. Second shot, up and good. Latrice inbounds to Markyla. Ball stolen away. Latrice gets it back. Another reach in and a turnover for the Lady Indians. Press five getting ready to come off the bench for the Indians. Ball comes into Mets. Mets dribbling back into the middle. Working it towards the right side. Loses her dribble again. Gets it back. We're going to have a jump ball. Possession back to the Indians. Good move there. For the Indians right now, when you think about their substitution here, bringing five in. He went with the starters. Went with the starters to start the game or start the half, and then bringing that young core group that he had that they had in right before the start of halftime. Mets with good defense forces the errant shot. Ivory with the rebound. Ball to Durden. Durden going to bring it up off of Ivory's foot and right back to the Indians. They're going to get a tripping call. Possession will stay with the Indians. Inbound to the right wing. Inside, low block. Looking to get it up. Gets it up, but they got her with the travel before the shot. Ball back to the Jackets. It'll be Ivory to inbound. Goes to Mets right now. Just shy of the JD logo. She dribbles across half court. Good little crossover move there. Into the middle looking for Ivory. Stolen by the Indians. Going the other way. We're going to get a reach in foul. Couldn't tell the number there. But possession will stay with the Indians after the Yellow Jacket turnover. Substitution coming here for the Lady Jackets. Ivory will sub out. Into the corner, looking back inside. Ball stolen away, back to the Jackets. Claire Stinson comes up with it. Now Lyra Van bringing it across half court. Out to, Be to Bentley Metz on the wing. Back to Van. Up top to Makayla Durden. Looking for Metz in the short corner. 
A little too high out of bounds. Turnover. Possession back to the Indians. Jackets falling back into that 1-2-2 two, two zone. Long pass, almost stolen away by Durden, but she just couldn't get the handle, lost the ball out of bounds. Possession stays with the Lady Indians. Going to hold the ball, going to go ahead and make the sub. This will be the younger man coming in. Turn around with the shot. We got a foul. Indians go to the line, shooting two. First shot on the way. Two bounces off the back iron. Right back where it came from. Second shot. I believe second shot is up and good. That was Camille Orange, a freshman there for the Indians. Lady Jackets move the ball down the floor. Alira Van works it to Bentley Metz. Stolen away once again by the Lady Indians as they work and push the ball down the floor towards us. Stolen away by Bentley Metz. Two on one band. game, back band to back. A little too strong. Long pass down the floor. Short hop, sir. Looked like a short stop there, trying to feel one of those short hoppers off a hard clay infield. Ball back Durden and Metz. Metz working down into 15. Ball stolen away by Vance. Drives. Does an excellent job of selling the contact there. She'll go to the line, shooting two. Van, first free throw on the way. Leaves it a little short off the front iron. Beautiful Thomas going to sub in for Claire Stinson. And Markyla Durden comes out. Latrice Shivers checks back in. Lady Jackets trail the Lady Indians of Dodge County 48 to 11. Van, second shot is up. Left that one short as well. Rebound to the Lady Indians. Pass down the floor. Stolen away once again by Metz. Has the ball. Looks to the wing. To Shivers. Are they going to call this a shooting foul? Or are they going to say she was trying to pass it? They're calling a block on the floor. It'll be baseline out of bounds. Oh, excuse me. They did call it a shooting foul. Shivers to the line. Shooting two. Her first shot on the way. Good shake, rattles, and rolls it in. Latrice leading the scoring for the Lady Jackets tonight. As she approaches her second shot, drains it. Lady Jackets trail the Lady Indians of Dodge County 48 to 13. Pass out into the corner. Three-point shot. Air ball. Rebound back to the Lady Indians. Inside. Up. Missed again. Bentley Metz with the defensive board for the Jackets. Alira Van. Going to bring the ball down the floor now. Jackets with possession. Dodge in a 1-2-2 two, two zone. But still applying ball pressure. Got a push off there. Thought we might have gotten the reach-in call before the push. But a foul nonetheless. Possession stays with the Jackets. Amari Mann ch just checked back in for the Indians. Into the corner to Shivers. Dribbles back into the corner. 
Running floater, doesn't get it to go. Rebound to the Indians. Indians push it down the right side. 21 crosses, drives, loses the ball, and possession goes to the Jackets. Alira Van works this inbound. This is going to be Jemiah Burns checking back into the game for the Lady Indians. Shivers bringing it down the floor. Mets to her right, Van to her left, over to Van. A lot of ball pressure. Ball screen there from Shivers. She didn't decide to use it. Gives it to Mets. Swings it back over to Shivers. Shot fake. Puts it on the floor. Drives inside. Good, Good shot finish. by Latrice there, Coach. Cuts the lead of the Lady Indians as the Lady Indians lead our Jackets now, 48-15. to 15. Great job by Mets there on the defensive end, getting a hand on that bounce pass. Trying to just do some things here to disrupt the rhythm that Dodge County has had most of the night. Still battling, like you said, and you have to be super proud if you're Coach Rents, Coach Churchwell, at the way the girls are just continuing to battle and play hard fought basketball against this Lady Indian bunch. As the Indians do lose the ball, the ball touches the sideline here. Possession will go back to the Jackets. Mets will inbound it. Looks to Alira Van. She has Shivers down the left wing. Goes to her, little no look pass. On the shot fake, kind of came up on her toes a little bit. Didn't establish a pivot foot. We have a traveling violation. Ball goes back to the Lady Indians. Indians bringing it up the floor, right across that beautiful yellow jacket logo. Down inside of the low block. Turn, blocked. Back up, miss. Shivers with the rebound. Latrice pushes the ball on the left side. Back Spins. Up works it to the top. Back to Latrice at the wing. Shot is up. There's number 15 with a rebound. Put back. Lady Jackets trail the Lady Indians 48 to 17. Two minutes, 32 seconds left in this third quarter. Indians throw it away. Almost went right through the bench there of the Lady Indians trying to chase that one down. It'll be Lady Jacket basketball. It'll be Bentley Mets to inbound here. She's going to inbound to Alira Van. Trying to set something up here. Directing a little bit of traffic. Dodging that high 1-2-2 two, two zone as the ball stolen away. But Mets with a hustle play. Possession, yes, does stay with Dodge County. But you had about a 2-3 to three on one fast break coming until Mets swooped through and deflected the ball out of bounds. Lady Jackets now in a 1-2-2 two, two look of their own. Close to a backcourt violation there. Just did get across as they go inside. Offensive board, back up and in. The freshman, Chloe Johnson, for the Lady Indians. Puts two more on the board as Alira Van brings the ball across half court. Mets on the right wing, comes to Shiver on the left, puts the ball on the floor. Inside, running floater, just short. Rebound to the Indians, but she throws it right back to Van, puts up a three short. Smacked out of bounds by the Lady Indians. It'll be Yellow Jacket basketball. Number 45 there for the Lady Indians. Aggressive SWAT. Yes. A mighty strong one at that. Swatted it to the cheerleaders in the stands. Shot from the short corner. Short. Mets battling. Mets. Effort play there to Van. Van to Latrice. Shot is up. Shot is made. Big time three there from Latrice Shivers. Lady Jacket starting to work a little bit of ball movement. Trying to stretch that zone out a little bit. Dodge tries to respond with a three of their own. Possession to the Jackets. Van gets it to Shivers. Three Gives on it one. To the hot break. hand, Latrice. Latrice is up. Fouled. Calling it no shot. Blocking foul. Going to call it on the floor. Be Jacket basketball from the baseline. Coach Metz getting in a call here. Or Coach Rents getting the call in here. Bentley Metz will be inbounding the basketball. Got my names backwards there.
Look to try to just get it right to the low block. We weren't ready for it, but Metz does a great job of following the pass in, causing the tie up, keeping possession here. Metz will inbound. Cross screen, trying to get it out. Beautiful Thomas. Three point shot up, just short. Possession stays with the Lady Jackets. Alira Van dribbling up to the top of the key. A little between the legs. Dribble. Bounce pass looking for Metz. Stolen away. Great job again. Bentley Metz stopping the break. Yes, Dodge keeps possession, but Without that little poking the ball away there from Bentley Metz, probably going to be an open look for a layup. Inbound, down to the low block. Shot Bentley. blocked by Shivers. Metz is a heads of player coach and takes pride in the defensive end of the floor. And that's one thing that I learned when I was coaching at Reinhardt. We had a kid that gave everything she had on the defensive effort. You get a kid like that, you get kids to rally around them. And – it just makes that side of the ball mean that much more. 25 ball. seconds left in this third quarter. Shot clock is dead. Indians going to bring it down the floor. To the wing. Back up top to man. He got yes, it for a travel did. there. Ball. Stays or goes to the Jackets. It'll be Mets to inbound. Another Dodge County substitution. She's kind of been able to roll them in and out all night. Two platooning, three to four subs at a time. Fan brings it across half court. Jackets at the top of the key. Van works it left side to Latrice. Shot is up and off. Going into the fourth quarter, the Lady Indians of Dodge County lead the Lady Jackets of Jeff Davis. 50 to 20. Let's take a listen to our wonderful sponsors. Make the switch to Mitch. Visit Designs and More by Brandy located inside Mitch's Pharmacy. Brandy offers all occasion flowers, silk, and fresh. Shop designs and more by Brandy for gift baskets for that special someone. Shoes by Corky and jacket t-shirts for the entire family. Located at 5 East Coffee Street in Hazelhurst. Open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday and 9 to 12 on Saturday. Give them a call at 912-699-3784 and follow them on Facebook. All right, and we're back. Getting ready to have some fourth quarter action. Six minutes on the clock here. Lady Indians lead our Lady Jackets by a score of 50 to 20. Just got to keep battling here. Finish this fourth quarter as strong as you can. Lady Indians huddled. Coming back onto the floor. Lady Jacket coming out of the huddle as well. Once again, six minutes here on the clock to start the fourth quarter. Lady Indians to inbound. Hamilton will inbound it for the Indians. Down onto the wing. Dribbling back to the middle. Top of the key to Hamilton. Dribbling back up. Top of the key. Running floater there. Off. Rebound of the Lady Indians. Ball goes back up. Shots off. Offensive board will have a shooting foul against the Lady Jackets. Indians will go to the line. But once again, though, by five and a half minutes left here in our contest between the Lady Indians and Lady Jackets, we'll take a short, brief little intermission, come back, touch on a little bit of the pregame for the boys' end of tonight's contest between the Dodge County Indians and your Jeff Davis Yellow Jackets as the shot is off. Ivory with the rebound, battling down low. Get the ball to Shivers. Shivers bringing it down the floor. Pass into the corner, back to Shivers on the low block. Makes a move, puts it up. Just off, Ivory battling for the rebound. Ball goes to Wyatt, back out to Van. Wyatt on the wing. 
Alira Van looking in the middle to Ivory through her hands and back to the Indians. But then after our pregame segment before the boys contest, we'll be coming to you. And that one ought to be a good one. Indians with the ball dribbling high above the top of the key. Wyatt stepping out on the wing. Indians bringing it all the way back across into the short corner. Shot is up and off. Rebound to Wyatt. That was Autumn Rhodes with the missed shot for the Indians. Shivers bringing it down the floor now for the Lady Jackets. She's got Wyatt to her left. Ivory in the middle. They look to Ivory. She turns, shots up and off. Saved there by the Indians. Going to bring it up the floor. This will be Rhodes setting up the offense. Lady Jackets still in that 1-2-2 two, two zone. Wyatt steps out, applies a little ball pressure. Ball into the corner. Dribbles baseline. Up foul. Should go against Latrice Shivers. It'll put the Lady Indians on the line, shooting two more. Lady Jackets found somewhat of a rhythm in this second half, Coach, they have. defensively. They have. You know, we talked about it right there when we went on the break. Held them to 10 points coming out of the half. You know, you gave up 40 in the first half, and you hold them to 10 in the third quarter. So a lot of things you're going to be able to go back and look at on sure. the film if you're Coach Renz, <laughs> Coach Churchwell, that you can take as – little key learning points like look guys we struggled early we kind of settled in don't even worry about the score don't look at it we found ways to take them out of their rhythm and to That's slow right. them down in the second half and we found some ways to have some success and get some points on the board of our own in the second half which was something that was far and in between in the first half lady indians made both of their free throws score 52 lady indians 20 lady jackets lady jackets working inside destiny with a spin and a fadeaway. Stepped on the baseline there. Possession should, should stay with the Jackets in that case. It will. Destiny Ivory to inbound. Straight to Shiver. Shot from the corner. Rims in and out. Rebound to Xavier Mann. Tries to get it inside. Bodies on the floor. Ball to Van. Another Lady Jacket turnover. Indians with the ball, going to kind of pull it out, trying to slow everything up a little bit. Ball into the corner, inside. Drives up and in, high off the glass. Kamaya Smith, yet another freshman from this Dodge County Lady Indian roster. They're pretty young themselves, Lady Indians. A steal there, inside, up and in. Xavier Mann, the senior. Looking at this Dodge County roster, Coach, I mean, you just see freshman after freshman scoring here in the late stages of this contest. Fairly young bunch themselves. Seems like two teams that are full of youth competing here tonight. Lady Jackets with a turnover there. Possession goes back to the Dodge County Lady Indians. Number 14 inbounds it to number 13. Works it back across the floor. Turnover possession to the Lady Jackets. 242 left in the game. The Dodge County Lady Indians, 56. Your Lady Jackets, 20. Alira and Latrice working it back and forth. Band onto the wing. Wyatt inside. Works inside. Good ball movement right. from the Lady Jackets. Shot bangs in. Lady Jackets 22. Lady Indians 56. Look, that was Robinson there that put it high and in. Shots off. Ball to Van. Brings it down the floor into the teeth of that 1-2-2 two, two offense. Defense from the Indians. Shot up from Shivers for three. No good. Latrice had a good look at it. Got to get some rebound help. 
Lady Indians push it down. Continuing distributing the basketball. I tell you what. Missed opportunity on the rebound there for the Lady Jackets. Go ahead, Coach. Number 13, Amara Mann for the Indians. She likes to shoot that deep ball. And when she does, she's been money on it a couple of times in the first half when she was in. But she's put up a good bit of them. She Scared likes that money can't point. make it, Coach. <laughs> She definitely likes that shot from deep at the top of the key. The game of basketball has changed. It's a long shot game today. Yes, it is. Latrice Shivers dribbles down, works it to beautiful. Passes Aaron, turnover with possession going back to the Lady Indians. 130 left in tonight's contest. Working it inside to number 45. She puts the shot up, hits the back of the backboard, but nobody calls it. Shivers bringing it up the floor. Minute 12 left in the game. To Beautiful. Back to Latrice. Latrice drives. Loses it. Going to have a foul call. I believe I see young April Baker has checked in for the Lady Jackets over there on the right wing. Another part of this youth of the roster. Another freshman in the game here for the Yellow, uh, the Yellow Jackets. Shiver's first shot. Bullseye up and in. Lady Jackets, 23. Lady Indians, 56. 105 left in the game. Latrice's second free throw coming up. Shot rattles and falls. Just outside the net. And here come the Lady Indians. Number 13 pushes. Pushes it to the wing. Down inside the number two. Back out to 14. Who drives, floats. Shooting foul on the Lady Jack. The Lady Indians' first free throw rattles and falls outside of the net. No good. Second free throw coming. Shot is up and off the mark. Lady Jackets come up with it. Latrice almost loses it but keeps it. Works down the left side. Works inside the right just a little tall, which creates a turnover. Possession goes back to the Lady Indians. About 35, approaching 35 ticks on the clock. Lady Indians slowing the game down. Big Man. time shot by 13. Banks it in. Another deep three. She likes that deep three shot. Speaking of the deep three, did you see the shot Caitlin Clark hit the other night to beat Michigan State? Big time. Woo. Another Stole turnover away. there by the Lady Jackets. 13 drives. Shot is up, right hand's too strong. Beautiful comes up with it. Works until the trees, five, four, three. Shot is up, banks, no good. Player bounces, and it falls. Our Lady Jackets fall to the Lady Indians of Dodge County, 59 to 23. We'll take an intermission break, and we'll be back for Jeff Davis basketball action. After we Silas Worth Monument Company offers factory direct orders from Memorial Designs to remember your loved ones. They can create one-of-a-kind computer designs or traditional monuments. You can choose your remembrance in beautiful granite, marble, bronze, or cremation monuments. Call Victor Worth and his staff today at 912-375-4587 or visit their location at 353 Alma Highway in Hazelhurst. Also visit them online at silasworthmonument.com. 
Your eyes are your window to the world around you, and good vision is important to everyone. At Southern Eye Care, you can count on their expertise in treating all types of vision problems to help you see your best. From glasses to contact lenses, from surgical vision correction to treatment of eye disease and injury, their team is here to help take care of your eyes. Your vision matters at Southern Eye Care in Hazelhurst. Call them for an appointment at 912-375-2516 or visit them online at southerneyecarepc.com. Williams Brothers Trucking is now hiring qualified CDL Class A licensed drivers with at least two years over the road tractor trailer experience. Williams Brothers Trucking has an excellent benefits package. They have quarterly bonuses. They have great insurance. They offer flexibility as far as your work schedule. Um, you're not really pressured into starting at any certain time throughout the day. Be home every day with family owned and operated Williams Brothers Trucking. Apply now online. Go Jackets! Make tailgating easy and delicious with help from Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. Three Rivers Meat Company offers specialty cuts of beef, pork, chicken, and seafood. They also have several types of the in-house made fresh sausage. If you need a grill, they're the exclusive dealer for Traeger Grills in Hazelhurst. To place your order in advance, call 912-551-9621 or visit their beautiful meat counter at 90 West Coffee Street. Go Jackets from Derek Wooten and the Meat Professionals at Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. At Altima Hall Bank & Trust, we strive to help you live your best life. That means offering loans for nearly any dream or goal. With competitive rates, local processing, and quick decisions, we can customize a loan to fit your needs. This is Misty Boatwright, Relationship Manager at the Hazelhurst Branch. Come see me today at 57 North Tallahassee Street or visit our website at altimahall.bank. And let's work together to achieve your financial goals. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The Bank of Hazelhurst is Jeff Davis County's only locally owned and operated bank serving their friends and family since 1906. They offer a wide array of services including personal, commercial, and electronic banking services along with mortgage and ag lending. For more information on the services they offer, call them at 912-375-4228. Download their banking app or contact them online at bankofhazelhurst.com. The Bank of Hazelhurst. When others have their branches, they have their roots. Since their founding in 1968, the Beasley Group has become a vertically integrated leader in the forest products industry, and this growth has made them the largest hardwood sawmill in the United States and North America's foremost producer of crane mats and timbers for the energy transmission, utility, and construction industries. The Beasley Group is proud to be members of the Hazelhurst and Jeff Davis County community. They are also proud supporters of all Jeff Davis High School sports. Go Jackets from the Beasley Group. CNH Creative Flooring can make your floors beautiful. They are this area's foremost experts when it comes to concrete grinding, polishing, crack repair, and epoxy coatings. They offer hundreds of color epoxy flake systems to choose from, custom metallics, neat coats, inlaid emblems, and much more. Whether it's your home, garage, man cave, pool deck, sidewalks, porches, or carport, let us help you make it gorgeous, safe, colorful, and skid resistant. Call Daryl Hutto at 912-381-9037 or Cody Carter at 912-592-5493 or message them on Facebook.
Ladies and gentlemen, wake up. welcome back to the Yellow Jacket Network. Tonight's contest between the Jeff Davis Yellow Jackets and the Dodge County Indians is setting up to be a great matchup. Jeff Davis, with a record of 3-8, and eight, comes in with a big region-opening win last night. Last time at home, Jeff Davis defeated Telfair County 77-45. to And with the opening win at Berrien County last night, the Jackets are on a streak. The last two games really could have proved as a mark of growth for these Jackets going in because they have a mighty opponent tonight in Dodge County. Coming into tonight at 7-1, Dodge County may have had one of the biggest surprises in the state last night with a huge win over the Worth County Rams. They defeated the Rams 83-61 to in Sylvester. So it's going to be a great, great matchup tonight. Dodge is led, coach, by a big-time prospect, a big-time athlete, Duke Johnson. But the Yellow Jackets, with the length of Amari Jackson, and bringing the sophomore Latrell Sellers up, look to combat that tonight. Coach, talk to me about the game tonight and your feelings on this great matchup. Well, you know, you look at a matchup like this, and it's one that you get really excited for because it's one that's that can really go either way. And I say either way, you know, you can't look at the record of Jeff Davis like we talked about last time we were on the air for the guys when we played tail fair. Because so many games have gone back and forth and you've lost so many where a couple calls could have gone your way that didn't, a couple shots could have fallen that didn't fall your way, and you're sitting there looking at being 8-3 and three instead of 3-8, and eight, potentially. Absolutely. So you can't really look at records. And you and I know better than a lot of people, they got the most important one last night, and they started off 1-0 in the region and got a big win over a Berrien County and team who it kind of the same way. Really athletic, some good length, didn't have the best record. You can't really look at records, especially when you start region play. And to have gone out and handled Berrien how they did last night, 65 to 28 on the road in Nashville, to be able to come home with a chance to take on such a good Dodge County opponent who sits at seven and one, like after you said, a huge win against Worth County last night, who we also are a little familiar with, Coach Paul Williams at Worth County. The youngest boy, Ashton, averaging close to 35 points a game, averaging about eight, eight and a half, three-pointers a game. Dodge did a really good job of, of slowing him down and slowing that high-powered Worth defense, offense down last night to get the win that they got over the Rams. So... It's going to be a really interesting matchup, like you said, seeing the link that we have and bringing up Latrell Sellers against the length of Dodge County. And right now you look at this five coming on the floor for Dodge and you see the one that sticks out the most, Duke Johnson. Jackets going with the steady lineup that has kind of been our, our go-to all year with Amari Jackson, Malachi Smith, J.J. Benjamin, A.J. Hunt. And the freshman, Morega Sampson. Dodge coming on to the court with number 11, number 15, number 31, number 4, and number 14. Tip off coming to you. Jackets win the tip. Sampson gives it to Hunt. Hunt brings it down the floor, dribbling high above the top of the key. Dodge County playing straight up man-to-man, -man, going to help off the screen. Gives the ball to Malachi Smith. Back to Hunt. Loses it. Dodge going the other way. Ball goes to Duke Johnson. Easy lay-in for the, for the Indians to start off 2-0 on the night. The turnover. First the Jackets. And the Indians strike first, Coach. Jackets moving it down the floor. J.J. Benjamin in control. Off Sam screen. sets the screen. J.J. kicks it out of Smith. Smith, step back, but they get him for the travel. Took one Possession little shuffle there. To the Indians. One shuffle there right before the step back. 
Good move. Just had to eliminate the shuffle. Indians giving the ball inside, looking to Duke Johnson out to the corner. Shots McClendon, up. McClendon, big shot, big three. McClendon scoring all five points for the Indians thus far. Jackets bringing it down the floor. It's going to be Hunt with the ball. Bringing Amari out. Malachi with the ball. Now back up top, back to Hunt. Drives inside, loses it. Stripped away off the Indians' last possession. Stays with the Jackets. It's going to be Malachi on the inbound. Looking up top. Hunt to works to JJ. JJ. Hunt has it on the right wing. Sending JJ over to the left wing. He's going to take a three. Shots up. Rims in and out. Rebound to the Indians. Indians pushing the pace down the floor. Number 14 pushes it to McClendon. Duke McClendon Johnson with it in the Duke. middle. Ball block. Out of bounds. Jackets try to save it. Possession stays with the Indians. Earl Conaway coming in for Sampson. Need some little Earl big shots tonight. Ball into the corner. Inside to Johnson on the low block. Up and in, almost made it look too easy. Jackets now bringing it up, firing down the floor. Shots Lure, up. Big shot. Bang! Jackets big three-pointer. Hit three right there. Lure Jackets Earl cut the, the lead shot. to four as the Indians lead our Jackets seven to three. Right on cue. Little Earl, big shot. Dodge tries to respond, three of their own. Jackets rebound man. Amari Jackson comes up with it. Down the floor. Fortune to AJ. Once again. Who pushes it out to Lil Earl. Lil Earl, he can't miss. String music for the Jackets. Lil Earl, big shot. Two Just quick like three. that. Jackets cut the lead to one. Ball out onto the wing. That is Keontes Champion with the ball. Inside Duke Johnson. We're going to get a reach in call against the Jackets. They got him for a carry. Okay, even better. Jackets with possession. Substitution for the Indians. They put in a defensive guy to handle Little Earl Conaway. Jackets working the press, breaking it to A.J. Hunt. A.J. going to bring it up the floor. A.J. working the left side. There's McClendon. He drives. He's fouled. Shooting foul for McClendon. Jackets a race in a big deficit there in two shots as they trail by one. And what a great job, too, on that second shot from Earl to recognize that he was alone in the corner, realize where he caught the pass, knowing where he was on the floor, to take that little step back. I ain't nothing short about him. little Earl except his hair. That's what they say. Free throw on the way here from the Indians. Up and good. Ball all the way down. Little Earl puts it on the floor inside. Gives it to Amari. Oh, a little too strong. You wonder why. Dodge after pushing it. Contested shot. Amari. Big time effort play. Possession stays with the Indians. You almost have to wonder how. Why Amari didn't just go ahead and go up and stuff it with the one hand there after seeing what he did against Telfair. Sometimes he may be like old 88 Cadillac. Got to get him warmed up. That's the truth. Lay in there for the Indians. Extends the lead 10 to 6 as the Jackets. Hunt brings it down the floor. Hunt working the ball in traffic. Inside. Good. A good pass there by H.A. Hunt. Great vision. A little hot. Amari couldn't handle it. And the substitution comes in. What we have here coming in is Tobler for Hunt. We've got Sampson for Jackson. Ball out onto the right wing. Good call there. Traveling violation. Turnover. Possession back to the Jackets. Got the Indians for a travel. Jackets trailing the Indians 10-6. to 6. 438 left in the first quarter. Tobler, big Looking time pass Benjamin. down to JJ. Works it out. Little Earl, three ball. Three. It's up. No good. 
Indians come up with the rebound. They push it down the floor. Work it left to right. McClendon from way downtown. Big time travel there. Possession goes back to the Jackets. Laurel ain't afraid to hit that little stack back move. He'll let it fly. J.J. Benjamin driving the ball. He drives coast to coast. Blocking foul. But he's got two. I'm surprised we didn't get the look like they kind of grabbed him there when he went up to lay it in. Sure. Left it a little short because of the grab, but we'll take it. Benjamin to the line shooting two. The front end. First shot. Rattles out. Second shot coming for J.J. Benjamin. J.J.'s second shot is up. Bounces out. Got him over the back, Coach, but I thought they missed a trowel there coming in early. Yep. Looked like after the little – I didn't think he was going to dump it off to him on the other block, and then when he – almost like it surprised him, kind of shuffled a little bit, but didn't get the traveling call. Indians. Nonetheless, Indians with the old school three point play. Indians lead our Jackets 12 to 6. Left short. Wow. Big time put back by their Duke Johnson as the Indians lead our Jackets 14 to 6. Got a foul and a reach in by number 10 for Dodge County. No name, Jackson. Jack is to inbound. Down Jack, in the corner. What a working. play. Back Athletic into the corner. Athletic play by the Jackets. Malachi Smith drives. Kicks out a little Earl. But Dodge steps on the line. Possession goes to the Jackets. Coach McAvoy going down the bench. Looking to bring the big man, Amar Jackson, back into the game. He'll come in and get... Look like he's getting Hunt there. Into Amari. Amari. Up, drive. Good finish. And it's good. Contact. Jackets trail the Indians 14 to 8. Back into the 1 2 2. Out into the corner. Back out to the wing. Zips it inside. Thrown away, turnover, yellow jacket Jack ball. Is playing great defense, hands out, defending the zone. Great job, possession goes back to the good guys. Tipped away, possession stays with the jackets here. It'll come from same spot, going to keep it in the corner. It's a real difficult, oh, excuse me, they're going to move it back to the baseline. Ball was tipped out of bounds baseline, they will move it. Gets it Samson. in. Samson, works. Loses the dribble. Right back to the but jacket. But there's Hubbard comes up with it to Amari. Makes one miss. Amari Jackson is on fire. Great shot, Fake. Felt the presence of the defender coming in behind him. Got him off his feet and then lays it in for the easy two. Three-point shot for the Indians to respond. Off but back to him. Another three-pointer on the way. Amari Jackson, big-time effort on the rebound. Jackets cut the lead to four. To J.J. Benjamin. Benjamin. Athletic play. The rim. And the Jackets are on a roll tonight in Hazelhurst. 14-12, Dodge County leads. Ball out to the wing. Back up top. Jackets still sitting in the zone. Three-point shot. Too strong rebound. Coming this way. Little Earl pushes. Tober comes up with it. To J.J. Benjamin. J.J. it out. Three-point shot. Bang. And the Jackets take the lead. Timeout, Dodge to 14. County. Timeout in the night's game. We got a tech. Technical foul call. Jackets look, look to be shooting two free throws here. I believe. Or is it against the Jackets? They called a technical foul on J.J. Benjamin. Let the kid play. Technical foul against the Jackets.
McClendon at the line. First shot is up and good. Right as the ball Jackets. Game. Second shot up and good. Right as the Jackets hit the big three to surge in, into the lead. What a big moment, Coach. What a way to kind of take the air out of the Jackets there. Um, did we jackets. see what he did? Did he turn around and say something to the bench after the shot? It, it was hard to tell. But a big-time shot with a hand in the face. Shots off there from the Indians. Rebound to the Jackets. We try to throw it off of them. Block from behind, but they're going to call a foul. Sends the Indians back to the line. This will be another number not on our roster here going to the line. We have two number 33s. I'm going to assume it's Guyton. Considering it says he's a center and forward, and he's playing inside a lot tonight, so I'm going to assume this is Guyton on the line. Second shot is up and good. Lead back to three. Dodge leading our jackets 18 to 15. Little Earl crosses over, works oh. the left side of Tobler. Tobler, right hand shot, but he's got a shooting foul here. Tobler at the line. Got to take advantage. Anytime this Dodge bunch, if you can get them into some foul trouble and you can take advantage of these, you got to take the freebies and make them. First shot from Tobler. Back iron and back out. Some substitutions. Jackets going with a bit of a smaller. Nope, they're going to leave. They're going to leave Amari. Coach Max got to be questioning. That tech there, Coach. It's one of those that, as the second shot from Tobler's up and good, it's early. One possession game. Jackets trail by two. This is the same crew that, that called our previous game that let the girls battle and be physical and, and play and talk a little bit. And then in the first quarter, you get a big Duke three. Johnson, big spin move there, uses his frame, extends the lead to four. Timeout. Coach McAvoy looks like he wants a 30-second timeout. Let's go take a listen to one of our great sponsors. Cypress Hill Tent Shop, located in Graham, Georgia, offers tenting solutions for every need. Sunroofs, tent matching, removal of old tent, and new installation using state-of-the-art equipment and machines. Cypress Hill Tent Shop uses a union tent guaranteed not to bubble, fade, or discolor over time and offers both carbon and ceramic tent options. Tent protects the inside of your vehicle and keeps the inside cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. We also offer pickup and drop-off options for your convenience. Call us today. Go Jacket! And we're back. Jackets to inbound here from the baseline. They get it to Jackson. He's got help behind him. We're going to bring it over to well, going to go back to the middle. Now working back to the far side of the floor. Tries to make a nifty pass. Stolen away by the Indians. Going to get a foul call. Did catch some of the arm there on the up and under move. Not upset with that all. AJ gonna, trying to make a play. Can't give up an easy one. If you're going to get him, you might as well get him good. Jackets trail by four. Number four is first shot. Rolls in. He has got a smooth shot. Senior, Jadon McClendon, listed at six foot, 170 pounds. Second shot coming. Second shot, swishes. All right, Little Earl, back in. Time. Score. The bleeding. Indians, 22. Jacket, 16. Could have got called for a reach in there. Dodge in transition. Shot is up. And they give him a foul. Charge. Got him for a charge. Possession back to the Jackets. Possession to the Jackets. A little straight line press breaker here from Coach Mack and the boys. Running all the way across. Malachi Smith with the inbound. He sees it. Wow. Stole Duke away Johnson. by Duke Johnson Heads with the play there. Finish. Heads he played there, they extend the lead, 24 to 16. Coach Mack, 
calling another timeout here. Let's go take a listen to one of our great Yellow Jacket sponsors. EP American Footwear in Hazelhurst is proud to be a part of the Hazelhurst Jeff Davis community and are proud sponsors of all Jeff Davis County sports. If you're looking for a great job with a great company, they are hiring for all shifts. You can apply in person Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, at 10 North Hill Street in Hazelhurst. Go Jackets from all the folks at EP American Footwear of Hazelhurst. Go Jackets. Welcome back to first quarter action. What a great Saturday night in the nest as our Jackets battle the Dodge County Indians. Eight-point game in tonight's contest, but don't let the spread fool you. A pivotal call in the first quarter extended this thing for Dodge, and the Jackets are in the thick of it. Kind of like you said, Coach, that kind of a call kind of sucks the air out of the little run that we went on there. And then since then, we've been we've scored one point off of a free throw. Jackets on the inbound, pressuring are the Indians. J.J. Benjamin works the ball on the left side, puts the ball in the right hand, crosses over, gets it to Elijah. Elijah out to Lil Earl. Lil Earl drives into Amari. Pump fake, and we're chipping away. Amari Jackson, two more points. Jackets cut the lead to six. Tobler at the top defending. They get it out to the wing. Back up top. Toler comes out to defend the three. Shot rattles in. Oh, my goodness. Four must be living right. Shooter's roll there for McClendon. Ball comes to Tobler. He's going to take it all the way. Tobler drives a little too strong. Get back on defense, Elijah. Great job, Elijah Tobler. Get to the little Laurel. He's fouled. Laurel will go to the line shooting two. Crazy little sequence there. Tobler misses. He yeah, got a little frustrated, but then it got him behind the defense. Love the effort of the young buck there, yes. Coach. Love the effort. You can see him get a little frustrated on the baseline, but then when he realized he was behind the play, snuck back in, poked the ball loose. Like you said, Coach, you got to love the effort. Now Laurel at the line. Got our best shooter at the line, Laurel Conaway. First, First shot man. is up. Drains. Pierre. Sampson checking back in. Looked like Tiger at the 98 Masters. Second shot is up. It's good. Rattles it in. That was Shades Tigers. of Bubba Watson. That was Tiger's second Masters, I believe, wasn't it? Ball batted around Bass. everywhere. Bouncing around Tobler back in. He's crossing and driving. Big outlet pass a little Whoa. Earl. He's bold. Oh, big time effort. Right back to him in the corner. Save. Earl to Malachi. Just Aaron, but the Jackets are in the thick of this thing. Doing a great job battling inside, too. Going after rebounds. Battling on the boards as the Indians bring it up. Deep shot from the top of the JD logo is off. Rebound of the Jackets, but you got to get a foul call there. Well, I thought I heard a whistle. They did call a foul right there at the horn. Are we going to end the quarter? It appears that we are, and we'll start the quarter. I believe the foul came before the whistle. Foul did become come before the whistle, but because the horn went off, no reason to send them out to rebound. It'll be untimed. This does put us on the line. Jack trail the Dodge County Indians, 27 to 20. Excuse me. They are going to put time back up on the clock. I thought I heard the whistle right there before the end of the horn. So instead of shooting, a shooting foul, puts us in the bonus. We'll bring the kids back out for two free throws with .3 on the clock. First shot is up. And Great he, shot by Malachi. So second shot coming. Jackets trail by six. Big shot, shot by Malachi here. Two possession game for the Jackets. Quick shot. Jackets trail by five at the end of the first quarter. Let's take this time to hear from one of our Jacket sponsors. 
Experience a better way to bank at Interstate Credit Union in Hazelhurst, where they offer a wide variety of loans. Interstate Credit Union is second to none when it comes to low rates and great customer service, specializing in personal loans, new home and construction loans, and automobile loans, as well as many other types. Their broad services include personal checking, savings, business, in-person, online, and mobile banking, and much, much more. Visit them at 14 Henson Street or call 912-375-0640, or you can contact them online at interstatecu.org. Welcome back to second quarter action. As Coach Thomas McAvoy, the pride of Cuba, Alabama, leading our Jackets into war tonight. Our Jackets trail the Dodge County Indians by five. Energy high in the nest tonight. The Jackets are battling. Indians inbound it here. McClendon with the ball. Dribbling from left to right on your monitor, screen, phone, or tablet. Back to McClendon on the wing. Shot fake. Dribbles it inside, gets stuck on the baseline, but finds a man on the backside. Big time Block. blocked by Amari Jackson. Jackets get the ball back. J.J. Benjamin working down the left side. Benjamin holding the ball just on the county line of Jeff Davis County there at midcourt. Swings it out onto the wing to Malachi Smith. He's going to drive J.J. drives an athletic move. Effort play to get his own rebound, but knocked out. Dodge moving the ball up the floor. Coach down the right side. Three ball, drains Great it, shot. and Dodge extends the lead to eight. The Indians lead our Jackets 30 to 22. Malachi Smith dribbling, gets it back out. J.J. Benjamin. Sets the screen there. Inside foul. Shooter's foul, Malachi Smith goes to the line for two. Coach McAvoy pulling the rest of the unit, talking to him a little bit, trying to get him back, get the defense set up and ready to go. Jackets first shot, rolls. Malachi getting ready. Shot is good. Six-point lead for the Indians as they bring it up the floor. Keontae's champion with the ball. Out onto the wing. Savon Jackets Brown, trailing by six champion. here, Coach. Inside. Good shot fake. But Got him for a travel. Ball goes back to the Yellow Jackets. Big possession right here for the Jackets. Need to try and find a way to come down and get points. Whether it's getting to the free throw line. Need to keep trying to chip away. Ball to the middle to Benjamin. J.J. to Malachi. Malachi, Malachi drive. drive. Shot is up. Lays it in Off through the glass. <laughs> Jackets trail by four. Back to champion. Gets it out on the wing to McClendon. Looks to try to go inside. Turnover. Stolen away. Little Earl Conaway comes up with it. Oh, no, but we give it right back, Coach. Lazy pass. Turn Leads to a turnover. And a lay-in on the other end from Savon Bryant for the Indians. AJ moving the ball under control. Slows things down. Malachi kicks it out Smith. to Malachi. Malachi. Long. Shot a little too strong. JJ back to the three ball. Bangs it off the back. And Dodge comes back up with it. Got a floor foul now as our Jackets trail the Indians of Dodge County by six. I believe they got JJ Benjamin with that one. Sent. Gonna have two subs here. Sampson checks in for Amari Jackson. JJ Benjamin gonna come out, get a blow. Looks like Tober will come back into the ball game. Out of the corner, Bryant's three is off. Rebound for the Indians. Oh, ticky tack foul there on the freshman Regan Sampson, coach. Looks like that'll put. Keontes champion at the line for the Indian shooting two. Okay. 
shot is on the way. It is off rebound of the Jackets. Malachi bringing it up the floor. Dribbling to the right wing. Gets it to AJ. He's going to dribble it back to the top. Back to Malachi. Malachi on the left Laurel wing. in the corner. Kicks it low down there to Laurel. AJ with the ball. AJ getting trapped. Inside, Wide open nobody is Elijah there. Elijah Tobler, and he drops it in there, Coach. Jackets, 28. Great recognition there to get the ball inside. Tobler left alone down on the low block. Five-point game here, Coach, with five minutes left. Wow, what a floater there by Dodge County. Coach, what a back-and-forth basketball game. Yes, it has been. Both teams battling, getting to play a little physical. Trying to drive out into the corner for Malachi AJ for three. Malachi. Bang. Malachi Jones, big time shot. Jackets trail by four. String music from Malachi Smith. And Dodge County comes up with a timeout. Let's take a break to hear from our sponsors on this electric Saturday night. At Jeff Davis Hospital in Hazelhurst, we are committed to building a healthy community. We use the latest technology and our knowledgeable team members provide exceptional state-of-the-art care to our local community and surrounding areas. We provide a respectful understanding of care for our patients and their loved ones. For more information about Jeff Davis Hospital and the services we provide, call 912-375-7781 or visit us online at jeffdavishospital.org. Welcome back to the nest. Jacket in for a breakdown. The pride of Cuba, Alabama leading the way. Jacket's in a four point game with Dodge County. Dodge inbounds, coach. Out onto the wing. Swinging it back up towards the top. Drive, little dribble pull up. It is off. Jumped a little too early. We didn't get the ball, but Big it's blocked. Block by the Jackets. Inside. Little errant pass deflected by the Indians off their hand. Turnover, Jackets basketball. Going to get it in. J.J. Benjamin. Four minutes left in this quarter as J.J. moves it. Brings it right through the heart of Jeff Davis County. Works it out to A.J. on the right wing. A.J. looking. Malachi trying to cut open to the top. He does. They get it to him. Kick ball. Stays with the Jackets. Looks like it'll be Malachi Smith to inbound here. JJ bringing it through the county logo. Out on the right wing, right here in front of us. Step little step back, back three. three. JJ Benjamin. A little strong. too strong. Woo! Possession goes. To the Jackets there. Had us in a 3-2 fast break there. Just a bad pass. Little low. Never really bounced back up off the floor. Was hard to handle. Jackets have it. Bringing it down the floor here is AJ. Loses the handle. Gets it back. Looks like we've got a 10-second call. Didn't advance it past half court before the 10-second count was reached. Coach McAvoy asking, as I just looked up, there were 23 seconds on the shot clock. So 12 seconds would have exceeded that time limit. Into the middle to Duke Johnson. Wow, elevated shot by Duke. Amari gave it all he had. JJ brings it down the floor. Right wing dribbles, tries to get into the corner. Malachi shots up. Foul and one. And one. Chance for the four-point play. Malachi Smith is on fire as the Jackets trail the Indians by three. I mean, Coach, you, you think back to the scoring breakdown here, if we had some statistics, you got your three leading scorers putting up the points, and you're also getting a lot of help from Elijah Tobler and Amari Jackson tonight in the scoring column. Malachi Smith drains as the Jackets cut the lead to two. Into the middle, out onto the wing, shots up, good. And dodge. Like the veteran team they are, Dan answer with a three-point dagger. Keontes champion is J.J. Benjamin 
Back to Malachi Smith. He Malachi. Off oh, the glass, ball. but there's Morega Sampson. Ball is blocked, but possession stays with the Jackets. Little heat check there from long range there from Malachi Smith. A little too strong. Great job by Sampson's corralling that rebound, trying to go up strong. Couldn't get up through the contact, but it will stay with the Jackets. A.J. to Malachi. Malachi spins, gets back it back to, to our point. A.J. dribbles, drives, back pops out top. to Malachi, who swings inside. inside to Amar, but it gets lost. Dodge comes up with it. They're in transition. Effort play. Oh! And they call a shooting foul on the Jackets. Dodge extends the lead to a five-point swing. Two free throws to come. 2.34 left in the night's first half. Dodge, 40. Good guys, 35. First shot is up and off. Substitutions here for the Jackets. Second free throw on the way. It's up and in. Six-point lead now for the Indians as the Jackets bring it in. J.J. Benjamin going to push it down the floor, working towards us here in the booth. Got us for a travel there. And it was a good call. He tried the Euro step there, got a little tied up, and it caused him to take an extra step into that little Euro. Ball out on the wing, into the corner. They look to get the ball to Duke down inside. Duke now back into the top. Stolen away by the Jackets. Two on one break. Laurel Conaway doing a great job defending the ball on the bounce pass. The way the Jackets are using that wave of that zone defense as they press the ball through the perimeter has been awesome tonight. Laurel to shoot two here. Front end. On the way. Two big shots here. Shorten off the front of the rim. But you're right, Coach. That's the key. When you're playing in that zone defense, they're going to be trying to swing the ball around. You've got to be really good at jumping in your gaps and playing good gap help defense. And so far tonight, the Jackets have done a very good job of that. Second shot, up and in. Lead back to five. 41-36. Dodge County leads. Out onto the wing. Three-point shot. A little it's long. Off. Rebound of the Jackets. Possession stays with the Jackets. I believe Coach McAvoy got in a 30-second timeout there to save possession before we could get to the jump ball. Let's take a quick time to listen to one of our great Jacket sponsors. Dr. Kurt Munsiak and his staff at the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic have proudly served this community as the original walk-in clinic for your sick visit needs and as volunteer sports medicine for all our Jeff Davis athletics since 2014. Whether at the clinic, on the sidelines, courtside, mat side, or on the diamond, Dr. Kirk is always ready to help. Give him a call at 912-375-4884 or pop in at 22 Cross Street in Hazelhurst behind Jeff Davis Hospital. God bless and go Jackets from the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic. Jacket, move the ball to their end of the floor, inside to Amar, out to Lil Earl. Lil Earl floater, but Amari Jackson fights. Possession stays with the Yellow Jacket. They're going to get Amari with an over-the-back call there. Oh, I'm sorry. Thought they called a jump there, but possession stays with the Jackets, or with the Indians. Indians going to bring it down the floor. A minute and 40 left on the clock. Out onto the wing. Down into the short corner. Skips it. AJ, oh, athletic play. AJ, Jackets away. come up with it. Long heave down the floor. Oh, no way. Amari Jackson jams it. The Jackets get hosed on the call. Wow. We were about to have pandemonium in the Jackets' nest. Caught it on the run, two steps into the two-handed jam. I, I'm sorry, bad call. I 
Little runner. Dodge with the Dodge. floater. You see it's another Dodge pivotal call the lead there. Seven. Another pivotal call that sucks the air right out of the gym, right as the Jackets get a big momentum play. In the middle to Jackson. A.J. drives out into the corner. LaEarl back up top. Tobler puts it on the floor. Back out to LaEarl. Pulls it out. He's got A.J. to his right, trying to get him the ball. Doesn't take Lurl the dribble handoff. Loses it. Possession. Seven-point lead for the Indians as they inbound. Bringing it down the floor, working away from myself and coaching the booth towards the American flag into the gymnasium. Back out onto the wing. McClendon gets it back up top. They go inside looking for Johnson. Out onto the right wing. Back inside for Johnson. Good move. Good finish. Great finish there by Duke Johnson, the junior. The lead is nine with 16 seconds left. Jackets need to end this half on a good note. Inside to Tobler. Tobler with the pump fake. Drains the two. Cut it to seven. Had two Indians looking foolish, tripping over each other. Half court. He off the mark. The Yellow Jackets of Jeff Davis trail the Dodge County Indians by seven at half. Let's hear from our sponsors and take a break on the Yellow Jacket Network. Need salvage parts for your new or late model car or truck? Then you should call McCarty Auto Parts, where parts arrive daily, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, at their location at 118 Automaha Road in Hazelhurst. Check out their inventory online 24-7 at McCartyAuto.com. If they don't have the parts you need, they'll find it. Call McCarty Auto Parts in Hazelhurst for all your salvage part needs. 1-800-329-7258. Go Jackets. Make the switch to Mitch. Visit Designs and More by Brandy located inside Mitch's Pharmacy. Brandy offers all occasion flowers, silk, and fresh. Shop Designs and More by Brandy for gift baskets for that special someone. Shoes by Corky and jacket t-shirts for the entire family. Located at 5 East Coffee Street in Hazelhurst. Open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday and 9 to 12 on Saturday. Give them a call at 912-699-3784 and follow them on Facebook. Silas Worth Monument Company offers factory direct orders from memorial designs to remember your loved ones. They can create one-of-a-kind computer designs or traditional monuments. You can choose your remembrance in beautiful granite, marble, bronze, or cremation monuments. Call Victor Worth and his staff today at 912-375-4587 or visit their location at 353 Alma Highway in Hazelhurst. Also visit them online at silasworthmonument.com. Your eyes are your window to the world around you, and good vision is important to everyone. At Southern Eye Care, you can count on their expertise in treating all types of vision problems to help you see your best. From glasses to contact lenses, from surgical vision correction to treatment of eye disease and injury, their team is here to help take care of your eyes. Your vision matters at Southern Eye Care in Hazelhurst. Call them for an appointment at 912-375-2516 or visit them online at southerneyecarepc.com. Williams Brothers Trucking is now hiring qualified CDL Class A licensed drivers with at least two years over-the-road tractor-trailer experience. Williams Brothers Trucking has an excellent benefits package. They have quarterly bonuses. They have great insurance. They offer flexibility as far as your work schedule. Um, you're not really pressured into starting at any certain time throughout the day. Be home every day with family-owned and operated Williams Brothers Trucking. Apply now online. Go Jackets! Make tailgating easy and delicious with help from Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. Three Rivers Meat Company offers specialty cuts of beef, pork, chicken, and seafood. They also have several types of the in-house made fresh sausage. If you need a grill, they're an exclusive dealer for Traeger Grills in Hazelhurst. To place your order in advance, call 912-551-9621 or visit their beautiful meat counter at 90 West Coffee Street. Go Jackets from Derek Wooten and the Meat Professionals at Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. At Altamaha Hall Bank & Trust, we strive to help you live your best life. That means offering loans for nearly any dream or goal. With competitive rates, local processing, and quick decisions, we can customize a loan to fit your needs. This is Misty Boatwright, Relationship Manager at the Hazelhurst Branch. 
Come see me today at 57 North Tallahassee Street or visit our website at altamahall.bank. And let's work together to achieve your financial goals. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The Bank of Hazelhurst is Jeff Davis County's only locally owned and operated bank, serving their friends and family since 1906. They offer a wide array of services, including personal, commercial, and electronic banking services, along with mortgage and ag lending. For more information on the services they offer, call them at 912-375-4228. Download their banking app or contact them online at bankofhazelhurst.com. The Bank of Hazelhurst. When others have their branches, they have their roots. Since their founding in 1968, the Beasley Group has become a vertically integrated leader in the forest products industry, and this growth has made them the largest hardwood sawmill in the United States and North America's foremost producer of crane mats and timbers for the energy transmission, utility, and construction industries. The Beasley Group is proud to be members of the Hazelhurst and Jeff Davis County community. They are also proud supporters of all Jeff Davis High School sports. Go Jackets from the Beasley Group. CNH Creative Flooring can make your floors beautiful. They are this area's foremost experts when it comes to concrete grinding, polishing, crack repair, and epoxy coatings. They offer hundreds of color epoxy flake systems to choose from, custom metallics, neat coats, inlaid emblems, and much more. Whether it's your home, garage, man cave, pool deck, sidewalks, porches, or carport, let us help you make it gorgeous, safe, colorful, and skid resistant. Call Daryl Hutto at 912-381-9037 or Cody Carter at 912-592-5493 or message them on Facebook. Cypress Hill Tent Shop, located in Graham, Georgia, offers tenting solutions for every need. Sunroofs, tent matching, removal of old tent, and new installation using state-of-the-art equipment and machines. Cypress Hill Tent Shop uses a union tent, guaranteed not to bubble, fade, or discolor over time, and offers both carbon and ceramic tent options. Tent protects the inside of your vehicle and keeps the inside cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. We also offer pickup and drop-off options for your convenience. Call us today. Go Jackets! EP American Footwear in Hazelhurst is proud to be a part of the Hazelhurst Jeff Davis community and are proud sponsors of all Jeff Davis County sports. If you are looking for a great job with a great company, they are hiring for all shifts. You can apply in person Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 at 10 North Hill Street in Hazelhurst. Go Jackets from all the folks at EP American Footwear of Hazelhurst. Go Jackets! Experience a better way to bank at Interstate Credit Union in Hazelhurst, where they offer a wide variety of loans. Interstate Credit Union is second to none when it comes to low rates and great customer service, specializing in personal loans, new home and construction loans, and automobile loans, as well as many other types. Their broad services include personal checking, savings, business, in-person, online, and mobile banking, and much, much more. Visit them at 14 Henson Street or call 912-375-0640, or you can contact them online at interstatecu.org. At Jeff Davis Hospital in Hazelhurst, we are committed to building a healthy community. We use the latest technology, and our knowledgeable team members provide exceptional, state-of-the-art care to our local community and surrounding areas. We provide a respectful understanding of care for our patients and their loved ones. For more information about Jeff Davis Hospital and the services we provide, Call 912-375-7781 or visit us online at jeffdavishospital.org. Up action here in Jeff Davis County. Coach, let's have a quick review of the first half. The Jackets battled their tail off in a back-and-forth game. A couple of missed opportunities couple of missed calls, and we're looking at potentially a one- to two-point ball game here no, at you're the right. half. You're right, Coach. I mean, you think about it. You hit the big three early from J.J. Benjamin and still not 100% sure what might have happened. The only thing we can kind of think, maybe just in the heat of the moment, you hit a big shot. I'm sure you got kids on their bench saying stuff to him behind him. Possibly turns around, maybe says something to one of the kids on the bench. They pop him with a tech. Kind of sucks the air out of the building. Dodge gets two free throws off the technical foul and gets to keep possession and scores off of that possession as well to stretch that lead back out as soon as you take a one-point lead. Then you battle back. You cut it back to a possession or two. After Dodge went on that little run, after the technical foul call, 
Then you get a big momentum shifter with Amar Jackson flying down the floor full speed. You hit him in stride, two steps, goes up, finishes with two hands on the two-handed jam, calling for a travel. Kind of sucks that momentum and that big burst of air and energy right back out of the building, and Dodge goes down and scores and kind of stretches the lead back out right as we tried to make something happen there. But, like you said, it's been a battle. They've been letting them play physical outside of those you know, couple knick-knacky calls here and there. But you can't, you can't be more proud of how the boys played in the first half well, than Coach McAvoy. You know, Coach, I think it's like this. When I was a young lad, there was a band called Little Texas. And they had a song, and our guys needed to listen to it, and it goes, I try not to think of what might have been. We got to look forward into this half. We got two quarters of basketball action in the nest in a great Region 1 tilt, led by the pride of Cuba, Alabama. Coach McAvoy, these Jackets will come out ready to play. Jackets will start with the possession. Good way to try to get some more points here to continue to chip away down seven. Inbound comes to J.J. Benjamin. He's going to drive it right through the heart of Jeff Davis County. A little ball pressure from the Indians. He's going to kick it out on the wing. Jackets dribbling back up top, getting their rotations right. Has a man sitting right in the middle of that Dodge County zone with Duke Johnson on him. They go down inside. Back outside. Shot is short. Rebound of the Indians. Flying down the floor of the Dodge County Indians. Misses the lay-in. They got him reaching over the back. Should here, Coach. Good job there. Boxing out by Malachi Smith. He gets it into J.J. Benjamin. Jackets back to work on offense. Benjamin. Jackets in stride, Coach, with the transition speed of Dodge County. J.J. Benjamin sets up on the left wing. Into Works the it inside. Back out, inlet. Another turnover for the Jackets in the first 45 seconds of the second half. Dodge drives. Oh, could have got a travel there on a the slide. Dodge works it back out to four, McClendon. Another inlet. Running floater, late foul call after he hits the deck. Dodge County will go to the line, shooting two. Dodge has been very good from the line tonight, Coach, and they've been able to extend leads with these shots. That they have, and we'll see the front end momentarily. Goes through the warm-up progression. Shot is up and in. Kind of gives the front edge of the rim a little kiss on the way down. Second shot. Getting going. Samson checks out. Jacket's going to go one big man in the lineup here. Second shot is up. Off the back iron. Rebound. And Dodge comes and up the with Indians. their own rebound. There's but we the get them for a the travel, travel, and the ball goes to the Jackets. Could argue the first one might have been a travel. Right there off the rebound, off the free throw. Tobler's going to come in here. Jackets working up the left side of the floor. J.J. Benjamin. Dribbling into the left wing, going back up top, looking for Tobler. Little pull-up jumpers off the mark. Rebound of the Indians. Here they come flying right towards us. Moving from left to right on your screen. They look for Duke Johnson. It's off his hand. Out of bounds, possession to the Jackets. Jackets trail the Dodge County Indians by eight. Benjamin going to come over to the wing looking for Tobler. He goes inside, back out to Tobler, into the corner. Malachi. Shot. Malachi Jones drains it, cuts it to five. The Jackets strike in the second half. As Dick Vitale would say, Malachi Smith playing like one of those diaper dandies. Hey, great shot there by Malachi. He's been there in a big way for the Jackets tonight. Deflected That's out of okay. By Amar. Amar Jackson living to play another day. Man, how big has Malachi Smith been tonight shooting the basketball? Gosh, he's hit some big-time shots and some key moments. Dodge the inbound. McClendon with the ball in his hand. Gets into the corner. Back into the short corner to McClendon. Inside. Duke gives it off. Lady. Good inlet pass there. 
TJ going to be bringing it up the floor. Tobler, Smith, Jackson, Benjamin, and Earl on the floor for the Jackets. Benjamin, JJ cuts, drives, move. athletic play. The Jackets stay in it, trailing by five. Great Dodge County there. has 48, Jackets 43. Good defense there from the Jackets. Ball out onto the wing. Shot is up. Three-point shot, good. Dodge has done a great job, Coach, of answering in big moments throughout yeah. the night. Yes, they have. It's like every time Jeff Davis throws a shot, Dodge throws one right back at him as the ball goes to the wing. Another shot is up, rims in and out. Didn't really have anybody go to try to crash the board there. Easy rebound for Dodge as they bring it down. McClendon with the ball. Now down into the corner, inside. Good move, up and under. Jackson got a piece of it, but put right back up and in by the Indians for an easy two. Benjamin bringing it down the floor. Right through the heart of Jeff Davis County. They're trying to force him to the left hand. Inside, back to Benjamin. Doesn't get it to go. Try to put a little English on that one, and it rolls just off the backside of the rim. Dodge coach has extended their lead to the biggest of the night. But we got the Indians with the travel here. And Jeff Davis. Pass possession. It'll be Malachi Smith to inbound for the Jackets. He's going to give it to JJ. What Jeff Davis can't do right here, Coach, is panic. They need to stay in and stay on schedule. Dodge is really trying to force JJ to the left hand there. Inside. Jackson. Be cute. Loses it, lost his footing as well. Dodge in transition. They count the basket and one. I believe they got Elijah Tobler. Oh no, by the reaction of JJ Benjamin, and I believe they may have caught it on Benjamin. No, they did get Tobler. It was Tobler. JJ asked and he pointed at Elijah. Dodge, extending the lead to 12. Little wide base here for the free throw shot. Lane violation, free throw wouldn't have mattered anyway. Jackets basketball. Malachi gets it into J.J. He's going to bring it up the floor. They're trying to make J.J. use his left. Good job but trying he to works get him back to the right. Back to J.J. out on the J.D. logo on the far side of the floor. Back over to Elijah. Back to J.J. Stolen away by the Indians. Great ball pressure there. Runner, he missed it. Great job. Good rebound by J.J. Benjamin. So we get a hold. Foul against the Indians. Great job battling. Four on one there going for that, that rebound. After McClendon's miss on the runner, they get it all the way down the floor to Malachi in the corner. They got a good double team going. Tries to throw it off of him. Pinned down by the Indians. They come down the other way. Easy lay in. Indians on fire right now. And Coach Mack has called his timeout. Let's go listen to our sponsors as the Jackets regain their composure. Dr. Kurt Munsiak and his staff at the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic have proudly served this community as the original walk-in clinic for your sick visit needs and as volunteer sports medicine for all our Jeff Davis athletics since 2014. Whether at the clinic, on the sidelines, courtside, mat side, or on the diamond, Dr. Kirk is always ready to help. Give him a call at 912-375-4884 or pop in at 22 Cross Street in Hazelhurst behind Jeff Davis Hospital. God bless and go Jackets from the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic. The Jackets come out of our timeout here with 324 left in the third quarter. Malachi Smith inbounds to J.J. Benjamin. Benjamin J.J. works the ball to the top, down to Amari. Aaron pass by Amari there. 
and a turnover for the Jackets. I believe they say Dodge County tipped it, which caused it to kind of get away from them. So it'll stay with us. Back to Benjamin at the top. Fakes hard to the left. Back to Tobler, deep three. Off the left side of the rim. Rebound by with one hand by Duke Johnson. Indy pushing the floor. Big Blocked time block down. by the effort play by Mara Jackson. Dodge leads our Jackets 57 to 43. A.J. Hunt going to check back in the game. Getting Amari Jackson a blow. Smaller lineup here for the Jackets. Into the corner, back into the short corner for McClendon. Out onto the wing. Champion shot is off. Benjamin with the rebound. Jackets pushing the floor from right to left. Back to Benjamin. Back out to Smith. Shot. Long. Batted out of bounds by, I believe that was McClendon of the Indians. Possession will stay with the Jackets. Jackets inbound here is A.J. Hunt. Scans, looks, works it to J.J. J.J. dribbles, crosses, works to the right. Right hand off the glass, and the Jackets stop the bleeding. Jackets trail Dodge County 57 to 45. Errant shot there by Dodge County. Jackets come up with it. Jackets, oh, pass. Laurel just misjudged it, and a turnover there for Jeff Davis. Had Laurel Conway streaking right to left, coming from that far side, the bench side of the floor. Just couldn't find him. Pass had a little too much heat on it, a little hard to corral. Indians to bring it up the floor. It'll be McClendon coming from left to right on your screen. Has the ball at the top. Jackets in a 1-2-2 zone. Ball out onto the wing. Back up top to McClendon. Inside, into the corner. Three-point shot is off. Good rebound by Duke Johnson, but batted away and then blocked. Bryant's shot was blocked. Stolen McClendon back comes back Indians. up with it for the Indians, and he's fouled. Twelve-point ball game here, with a minute and fifty-three seconds. Jadon McClendon. The Jackets have been in this position; they've overcome it. The smooth shot of McClendon extends the lead to fifteen. Dodge bringing in another tall, lengthy body. Both shots from McClendon are good. Inbound to Tobler. Gets it back to AJ. Shot is off. Indians pushing the tempo. Flying down the floor. Out into the corner. Bryant shot up. Good. Big time shot there by the Indian as they extend the lead to 62 over 45. Ball back Jackets. to AJ inside. Cutting inside. Tobler. It rims out. Yes, he did. Good call. We got there, Dodge for a travel. Benjamin going to check back into the game. Tobler will head back to the sideline here. Stops to talk to coach on his way. Benjamin out into the corner. Shots hot. A little long. The Earl Conaway with the ball. Foul called against the Indians trying to work that double team against A.J. Hunt. It'll be a side out. Hunt will inbound. Ball goes to J.J. Still trying to work him to the left hand. Good spin move. Tries to get it up. Couldn't get it there. McClendon on the break. Up and in. Tell you what, that kid's had a heck of a night now. He's hard to defend. 
The Jackets work down the left side. A.J. Hunt steps back, tries to cross, and just misses the dribble. Turnover goes to the Indians. Yellow Jackets need to try to find some way as Dodge County is going to take a 30-second timeout here. Dodge County leaving our Jackets 64-45. to Let's hear from one of our Jeff Davis network sponsors. Need salvage parts for your new or late model car or truck? Then you should call McCarty Auto Parts, where parts arrive daily, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, at their location at 118 Ottawa Hall Road in Hazelhurst. Check out their inventory online 24-7 at McCartyAuto.com. If they don't have the parts you need, they'll find it. Call McCarty Auto Parts in Hazelhurst for all your salvage part needs. 1-800-329-7258. Go Jackets! Coming out of this timeout with 19 seconds left in the third quarter, our Jackets trail the Dodge County Indians 64 to 45. Dodge County works the ball down the right side, kicking it back to the top, back to the wing. Bryant's going to work it, stolen away, but right back to Dodge County. Just kind of forces it up. Foul and one. And the right length at the of end Dodge of the quarter. County. Paying off on the floor. Bryant kind of had a little bit of a, saw the time was running out on the clock. Kind of forced up a shot from deep. Offensive rebound. Back up and in. Going to be .3 seconds on the clock before the end of the third quarter. The old-fashioned three-point play. It is up and good. Dodge extends the lead over the Jackets to 22 as the score is Dodge 67, Jackets 45. And this quarter change, let's go hear from one of our great Jeff Davis Network sponsors. Make the switch to Mitch. Visit Designs and More by Brandy located inside Mitch's Pharmacy. Brandy offers all occasion flowers, silk, and fresh. Shop designs and more by Brandy for gift baskets for that special someone. Shoes by Corky and jacket t-shirts for the entire family. Located at 5 East Coffee Street in Hazelhurst. Open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday and 9 to 12 on Saturday. Give them a call at 912-699-3784 and follow them on Facebook. Well, welcome back to the Jeff Davis Network as we start the fourth quarter in the nest. Our Jackets trail the Indians of Dodge County 67 to 45. Dodge County will have possession to start this fourth quarter of action. All right. To me, keys of the fourth quarter here for the boys are just. Have fun, number one. Keep playing hard. Battle. This one's kind of gotten away. Doesn't mean you can't chip away and get yourself back into it. That's the key. Just got to get stops. That's where it's going to start. You got to get stops. If the ball goes in the corner to McClendon, three-point shot rims in and out. Nobody there on the box out. Easy put back lay in there for the Indians. Benjamin bringing it up the floor, working from right to left on your screen. Loses it right back to the Indians. They throw it the length of the floor. Laid up and in by McClendon. Works it on the left hand, and Dodge now has 71 to the Jackets, 45. Dodge works the ball. Block right Malachi. back into our face. Big shot there. A little strong, and Moragas is foul. Moragas Sampson will head to the line. He'll shoot two. You did have to kind of ask the question. You had to kind of wonder after such a great first half. Sure. And the battle going back and forth, going back and forth. When would you start to see that, that up tempo, throwing the ball down the floor, advancing the ball, trying to run the floor and run you to death? When you would start to see that from Dodge County 
and when their length would really start to kind of set in and kind of put a stranglehold on the jackets. And it's definitely started happening midway through towards the back end of the third quarter as they started to stretch the lead as that shot is off and the Indians now work from left to right. McClendon, who's had a heck of a night for the Indians, gets it to Bryant, shot fake, running floater, leaves it short. Right back to the Indians. Bryant into the short corner, inside, lay in is good. Left hand roll there for the Indians. The Jackets push the ball up the right side of the floor, the crossover to the left. JJ out to Malachi. Malachi back to Benjamin. Malachi. Wide open on the wing, big shot. Hits the front rim and Dodge comes up with it. But a travel for the Indians, keeps possession with the Jackets. With 6.43 left to play in tonight's contest, our Jackets trail the Indians of Dodge County, 73 to 45. J.J. Benjamin on the right wing. Good screen there from Sampson. Benjamin loses the handle again right there in the middle of the floor, but stolen back by the Jackets. Malachi Jones drives, cuts, shot is up, shooter's foul, and we're going to the line for two. Malachi Smith will be at the line. Malachi has been extremely steady from the line tonight. Yes, he has. He shot the ball very well from the line. He shot the ball well from deep. It's kind of cooled off, though, here in the second half. Um, as Dodge County's made their, their big run. First shot is up and in. Second shot on the way. Off the back iron and back out. Bryant with the ball. Going to swing it back. Dodge working left to right. Long pass. Man. Bryant dribbles into the short corner. Dribble pull up. A little short over the back side of the rim. They missed the back end. Benjamin going to come up the floor here, working from right to left on your screen, looking into the corner. The Earl up and under circus layups, no good, but we're going to get a foul called against the Indians. Possession will stay with the Jackets. Jackets continuing to battle in tonight's contest. Latrell Sellers checking into the game. For Sampson, first time we'll get to take a look at Latrell Sellers tonight. And they go right to Latrell Sellers, up Latrell and in. Latrell Sellers with the end cut and two points for the Jackets. The Jackets cut the lead as they trailed the Indians, 73-48. to 48. Out on the wing. Good double Latrell team. Sellers with a the turnover there the for the Jackets. But Dodge gets it back. Up Earl, Earl working down the left side, Coach. Pulls up three ball, in and, in and out. out. There's Latrell rebound, with the Latrell. rebound. Must have gotten all ball there. Deflected away by the Jackets. Possession will stay with the Indians. It'll be a side 5 24 left in this game. Out onto the wing, trying to work it inside, stolen away. Ball. Malachi oh. drives. Malachi. Runs with the foul and one. Jackets, 48. Indians, 73. Jackets have continued to fight all throughout the night, have been in this ball game from the jump. As fouls and things transpired and the lead has expanded, the one thing our Jackets have not done has folded. They've not quit, and they continue to play the right way. Malachi Allen. Smith. We'll try to finish First it off shot. the old-fashioned. There's Latrell Sellers There's with a the rebound. Big-time effort play. J.J. Benjamin, three ball. Another offensive board by the Jackets. Trying to work it back to Benjamin. Errant pass. It'll be a turnover. Ball will go back to the Indians. Dodge County gets the turnover. Five minutes left in the game. Ball deflected out of bounds by Laurel Conway. Possession stays 
with the Dodge County Indians. Just under the five-minute mark. Ball stolen away again by Conway, but out of bounds. Possession stays with the Indians once again. Let's Going to have a timeout here by the Indians, Coach. Let's go listen to our great network sponsors. Silas Worth Monument Company offers factory direct orders from Memorial Designs to remember your loved ones. They can create one-of-a-kind computer designs or traditional monuments. You can choose your remembrance in beautiful granite, marble, bronze, or cremation monuments. Call Victor Worth and his staff today at 912-375-4587 or visit their location at 353 Alma Highway in Hazelhurst. Also visit them online at silasworthmonument.com. All right, we're back. Just shy of the five-minute mark. Dodge County is set to inbound. Yellow Jackets coming out of the huddle. Just got to keep playing hard. Got to keep battling here. Chip away however you can. It starts with stops. Desperately need one right here. Indians with the ball. Going and trying to work it inside of the middle. Shot from the corner. Yep. In and out. Offensive board from the Indians up and in. Jackets continuing to play high effort basketball. Lil Earl with a step back, gets it to JJ, works it in the trail. Great ball movement. The trail sellers kind of turned around jumper there. Had a sh shot to go down. Kind of rattled and rolled in there in the rim and couldn't fall. Jackets. Now the Indians throw it away. It'll Trail be jacket basketball. The Dodge County Indians by 25. The score 75 to 50 with four minutes left in the night's game. J.J. Benjamin inbounds to Malachi Smith. Works it back to J.J. On the floor for the Jackets, you have J.J. Benjamin, Latrell Sellers, Laurel Conway, Malachi Smith, who puts up a three, and it's good. Big time shot by Malachi. And Cutting Amari into Jackson. that lead with 3.49 left in the game. Indians working it up the floor. Amari Jackson is the fifth Yellow Jacket on the floor currently. Indians looking to get into the corner, trying to respond with a three of their own. It's off. Turnover. Back to the Jackets. Earl Conway ahead Little of Earl. Malachi Smith. Malachi. Ball they is out. The shooter's foul shooting should foul. be. We should be going to the line, Coach. I believe you're right, Coach. It looks like they are. Yes, they are calling it a shooting foul. Malachi Smith will be at the line shooting two. That's the key. Defensive stops. And when they give you a freebie, you got to make them all at this point. Can't Amen, afford to miss brother. the free ones. First one is up and good. Elijah Tobler back into the game. Looks like he's going to give the Earl Conway a blow. Second one is up and good. Deflected out of bounds by Amari Jackson. Going to start to see what kind of pressure the boys can bring right here. Pulling them up. Dodge looking like... They're not trying to take any chances, bringing the starting five back in off the bench to handle the defensive pressure of the jacket. Into the corner, looking for the trap. Frantically dribbling the ball around are the Indian. Oh, wow. What a move from McClendon. Foul there by Amar Jackson. And you got to wonder at this point with the starters back in, what is there to accomplish? You got to worry about injuries, coach. You got to worry about all those things. And it's a, still a long region season. This is only game two. And I mean, you're talking about a team in Dodge County that's sitting at seven and one right now. Just got arguably, and granted, it was night one, but just got arguably what could be one of the biggest wins in the region on the season last night to kind of put themselves in the driver's seat early and you're up 25. And I understand 
seeing the pressure and as that ball's blocked right to the cheerleaders. But Big time block there by the Indians. That was Jabori Graham on the block there for Dodge County. But I understand seeing that pressure and wanting your ones to come in off the bench and handle the pressure. Nice little jump shot there. Jack still working, still competing. McClendon pulls back, drives, uses his left, but there's J.J. for the turnover. Duke Johnson comes up with it. McClendon's McClendon, shot is up. wide open three in and out, but there's Duke. Contested shot that falls. Benjamin down low. Jackson, they're going to get him with a travel. Jackets trail the Indians of Dodge County by 20 with two minutes and 39 seconds left in the game. Got McClendon for the travel there. That's the right call. Two thirty-two left. Jackets trail by twenty. JJ works it up the left side. Three ball to Latrell. Big shot, little short, and Dodge comes up with the rebound. Dodge slowing the pace down, working it down the floor. McClendon gonna bring it right through the heart of Jeff Davis County. Little move out of the short corner to Duke. Shuffle his feet a little bit. No call. Back to McClendon. His pull-up jumper is good from the free throw line to extend the Dodge County lead. J.J. Benjamin out on the J.D. logo. Fires it across the court. Down there to Amari Jackson. Pull-up jumper is off the mark. Rebound to Dodge County. Ball coming back to McClendon in those the bright yellow shoes. The entire offense runs through number four of Dodge County. Yes, it does. Oh, what a move there. Drives inside. Got it for the travel. Great call. Was a great move if he wouldn't have traveled. But you're right, Coach. They do so much through McClendon. And then when they get in their zone offense, when they see zone, they try to work the ball through Duke with his big, powerful sure. body in the high post. Very good offense. Little Earl, big shot right off the rim, and it's back to McClendon. McClendon slows things down, pulls it up into 31. 31 to 10. And like that, we've got Dodge County 81. Yellow Jackets 57. A minute and 11 left in the nice contest. But you're exactly right, Coach. I mean, you think, think about looking at the time right now and look who's still on the floor. After you get arguably one of the biggest wins to set yourself up to be in the driver's seat, you've got your dogs in with a minute on the clock, up 81 to 57. There's got to be a worry about injuries or something crazy happening just because you never know. Absolutely, Coach. The McClendon in the corner. Going to dribble that back out. Back up to the logo at half court. Into the corner. Shots up. Three-point shot is good. That extends the lead. Indians now lead 84 to 57 over your Yellow Jackets. J.J. Benjamin seconds. working it to the left side. He cuts across. Wide open shot. Little Earl Conaway, who drains a three himself with 19 seconds left in the game. And that's why you missed the dunk. Number four from Dodge County. Hangs on the rim. Catches a foul himself. You know, as much as I hate saying it, that's huh. why you smoke the dunk when you're up 35 and you try to dunk. That'll be a technical foul against McClendon for hanging on the rim as he is subbed out. And it should be. 100% should be. The Earl Conway to the line for the Jackets, shooting the two technical foul free throws. First is up, back iron and out. Second Little Earl makes good. the second shot. Jackets 61, Indians of Dodge County 84. 
12.7 on the clock. Jackets will have this possession. They get it in to Earl. Trying to make something happen. Gives it to Malachi, whose shot is off. Rebound to the Indians. Throwing it down the floor to Duke Johnson. And that's why you missed it. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, our jackets fall to Dodge County, 61 to 84. We appreciate all of you. We love you. Go Jackets. We'll see you next time. On